Yo, Tube, what is good? It's Aegis. Um, in this video, I'm gonna be going over the new Frost Mage, the newly reworked Frost Mage. Um, obviously, it's still very fresh. It's only been out about two, three days. However, uh, the guide is not really meant to be the something that's gonna be completely accurate. You know, months from now, it's just supposed to be able to get you guys rolling at least at the same pace that everyone else is at right now. Get you up to speed, get you up to date on what's currently being viewed as like the best builds and how to play and whatnot. So. Anyways, let's hop right into it. As you guys can see in the bottom right corner, what we're going to be going over here is the racials, uh, the stat priority, what enchants you want, uh, the general tree talents, the frost talents, the PvP talents, and we're going to be going over how to do damages frost, what shatters are, how to combo your different spells, our defensive play, which is going to involve using our mobility to avoid damage, and how to trade cooldowns correctly with your team. It's going to provide um, a gameplay example where I'm going to do a live commentary over a shuffle or a 3v3 match that I had. And then I'll go over some add-ons that should be able to get you rolling in the right direction. Um, anyways, let's hop right into it. I just want to preface this guide also by saying that the main, <clears throat> I guess, context for most abilities that I will be describing will be in the context of a 3v3 or shuffle situation as those are going to be the most played uh, game modes um, for you know like shuffle I guess being the main one but anyways that's yeah that's all I really got to say and let's get right into it all right first things first like I said we'll go over the racials um, the alliance side is going to have our base uh, our best racials so in my opinion the number one racial that you can play as a mage is a night elf and I'll go over this a little bit later, but I first I want to describe the rest of the racials. So like I said, number one, I think is Night Elf. Uh, the second one on Alliance that you could play is Human. Human is not awful. Uh, then after that comes probably Gnome. Now for Horde, uh, one of our better racials is going to be Orc. And then after that, Troll. I wouldn't play any of the other ones. You could, <laughs> I mean, if you could, if you wanted to like meme around, you could play Torin for the War Stomp. But I don't think it's uh, the best decision. Now I'm going to go over a little bit as to why I think these racials are so good. So Meld is kind of a hard ability to describe. Meld is just a very diverse ability. Basically what it does, it gives you access to an ability called Shadow Meld, um, which basically makes you drop combat, makes you turn invisible for a second. And the reason why this ability is so good is because you can actually use it to nullify certain abilities in the game. Like one example I will give you, um, it's just something that's very common. Uh, Stormbolt from a warrior, which is their stun. So, like, obviously, <clears throat> um, the way that this stun works is, like, it's a projectile that they throw in the air. And you have the ability to actually use your racial to counter this. So, you can shadow meld any type of projectile in the air. Um, as long as you press it as uh, as long as you press it while it's in the air it doesn't have to be timed perfectly for projectiles it's just for example um let me log back in just to show you real quick as long as something is in the air and it's on its way to you you can shadow mode it i'll just give you a brief example um jump down so let's say i have a uh the glacial spike glacial spike has a very long i guess travel time not really a long travel time but you can see it coming towards you and then once you see it coming towards you and you see that it's in the air then you will be able to shadow melt it so you can see here glacial spike let's say i was the enemy and i saw this glacial spike being cast on me what i could do is wait for the cast to finish and then as soon as it launches in the air you can shadow melt it i'll try to do it as if i was the enemy that's all you have to do as soon as the cast finishes, um, press Shadow Meld, it'll register that uh, it's already in the air coming towards you and you can Shadow Meld it. So you can do this for any projectile in the game, uh, Death Chakrams, uh, The Hunt from Demon Hunter, Rapid Fire from Marksman Hunters, Aim Shot from uh, Marksman Hunters, Chaos Bolt from Destro Warlocks, um, Storm Bolt from Warriors like I said, Glacial Spike from the Frost Mage. Uh, the Tinder Fireball Combust from Mages, uh, from Fire Mages. Like I said, extremely diverse ability uh, can be used to avoid a lot of high damaging abilities. So I think it's very good to get used to this ability because I personally can't play without it. Uh, 
you're probably like, damn egg, like, just tell me you want me to play Night Elf without telling me you want me to play Night Elf. Uh, I really think if you're a mage, you should be playing Night Elf. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna keep it real, but like I said, the other racials you have um, human. So the reason why some mages play human is because you get more stats from uh, your stats. So we would explain it, but the reason why human is so good, or the reason why some people prefer to play human, is because it's basically like a one to two percent stat increase on all of your stats. So this allows you to be a little bit more flexible with your gear. It also allows you to, if you want, not play a medallion because the racial for a uh, human is a trinket out of stuns. It's a three minute cooldown, lets you trinket out of stuns. However, I don't recommend this because on mage, you are going to be trinketing a lot of things that aren't stuns in order to create momentum for your team or to the ability to be able to uh, blink or sorry, trinket counter spell something, for example, or trinket aggressively in situations where you have a lot of momentum. Maybe you uh, like boomies, for example, are really powerful right now. If you play human without a trinket, you're not going to be able to trinket out of cyclones, hexes, stuff like that. And I think that's very crucial. Um, but if you do want to play human, you can do that. Then for horde, um, we have obviously the orc which is going to give you Blood Fury, which is like a basically uh, it's a two minute cooldown damage trinket. It's essentially badge, if you guys know what badge is. I'm saying I don't actually have one, but like a little on use proc gives you a main stat. And then also you get um, Hardiness, which is 10% stun reduction. So it's okay. It's not the worst. And then Troll, obviously, I think it's Troll to play Troll, but it gives you a, a three minute cooldown CD, which lets you get i think it's 10 percent haste for 10 12 seconds something like that not great but if you did want to go that route you could anyways let's enough talk about the racials um let's go on into the stat prio and the enchants so <clears throat> for our stat priority basically what we want to aim for on a frost mage is um with this actual rework that we just got they changed our mastery so if you guys did play frost if you know anything about frost mage you'll know that our mastery is icicles and basically that's going to say casting frost bolt ice lance or flurry will grant you an icicle um casting ice lance will cause all the icicles stored to begin launching at the target dealing however much damage and you can store up to five icicles so that used to be it pretty much with the mastery it used to also uh say that third line increases the damage of frozen or blizzard and comet that part, I believe, uh, has always been part of Mastery. However, this is a new part of Mastery. Um, the final line where it says increases the damage of Lance, Spike, and Ray of Frost. So Ice Lance, Glacial Spike, and Ray of Frost are going to be three of your huge damaging abilities on Frost. Like pretty much your main ways of killing people. So I actually think um, Mastery is very, very good on a Frost Mage. Also for another reason why I think Mastery is pretty good is because of a talent that we'll go over later um but winter's blessing basically it's going to increase your haste by just a flat eight percent and it's going to increase how much haste you gain from all sources by ten percent so there's two ways to think about this uh there's the one way of thinking which is like um wow i gain ten percent more haste from all sources like i can really build up a lot of haste this way or there's the other line of thinking which i think is more um applicable to what we're going to be doing as frost mages is maybe i don't need to stack so much haste because i have this little winter's blessing talent which is going to make it to where i actually don't need to wear that much haste gear to still have good haste on frost mage so i'm not in pvp combat right now however my stats in pvp combat are 35 percent haste um 25 mastery and 30 percent verse so let me write this down. This is what I'm rocking right now. 35% haste, 25% mastery, 30% verse. Now, I like I said, we're still pretty new into the rework. So I haven't been able to test out all the different stat combinations yet. However, this is what I've been playing. Um, you know, I was able to push kind of high on the... I've literally only played like... Well, actually, I have played a lot of Frost this week, but yeah, I've been spamming shuffles as Frost. I'm not quite the number one spot, but 
Um, I've been trying to get my stat parity more in line with Frost because the Conquest gear isn't out yet. Sorry, the Conquest cap is not unlocked yet. So I haven't been able to really test uh, a more mastery heavy build. Uh, I do think there is potential that you'll run maybe like 30% haste, 30% mastery, 30% verse. I personally think that is probably the most ideal. But I think it's also not like a huge deal if you wanted to run a little bit more haste. But I'm going to go ahead and just say that this is probably the stat line that you're going to want to run on Frost Mage. Here, let me make this. There we go. I think like 30, 30, 30 is going to be a very, very good balance point. If you guys didn't know, 30 for stats is usually the cutoff. This is stats that come from your gear. So it's not going to be stats like artificial stats, like from Tomo Vantanitis, for example. Um, basically, after 30%, it's going to start to DR with itself, which means it's going to diminishing. It has a diminishing return past 30%. Um, so anything past 30% that you can get from gearing is going to be a loss of value so i feel like this stat line is going to be pretty good because it's going to be right on the stat line of your mastery um and it's going to give you the most amount of damage possible by increasing the damage of all of your different spells as much as you can by being at 30 percent um, but it's not going to dr with itself uh, you're still going to have really good haste at 30 percent. so that's kind of like my prediction i haven't been able to play with that stat line yet but um somewhere around there is going to be pretty good um, so yeah, now I'll go over the enchants here for you guys. So the enchants that we're rocking on the weapon is going to be Sophic Devotion. That's going to be a nice little intellect proc. It's going to give you about a thousand intellect, which basically just means a lot more damage. Um, for the bracers, you're going to want to run the 200 speed. I actually don't have them. For the chest, you're going to run waking stats. For the back, you're going to run homebound speed. This is going to be, uh, just give you a lot more speed in the arena it's going to increase your just your default movement speed very underrated stat um, for the belt you're going to want the shadowed belt clasp um, this is like just a stamina increase just raw stamina increase then for the belt or sorry for the legs you're going to want the uh, 170 sec, uh, 177 intellect 131 stamina I believe this is called uh, spell thread I'm going to have a I guess I'll leave a thing in the description or maybe on the screen of what the items are called but yeah for the boots you're gonna want the watcher's loam and then this is where it's uh it's gonna vary i think that you'll want the mastery enchants on your ring along with the mastery gems but this is gonna change based off of your guys's gearing order that you had um so basically just because i have these gems in these certain spots isn't gonna I mean that that's going to be the best for you you just want to fill these in based off of like what pieces you have in order to get that stat in order in order to get these um these stats you you're going to need to mess around with your gems and your enchants to achieve the best stat line that you can so if you maybe crafted gear a little bit differently or you're getting your conquest gear in a different order you may need to move your stats or move your gems and your enchants to fit whatever your current gear situation is to get the best uh to get the best stat line anyways that's about it i guess i'll go over like the uh the crafted gear that you want real quick so you're gonna want the precog on your boots um if you guys don't know what precog is or you don't know how to craft gear definitely check out my guide how on how to craft precog just look up Aegis precog guide should be the first uh, video that pops up there and then for the second one you're going to want the infurious binding of gesticulation that's going to give you another primary stat increase which is basically anytime when you apply a loss of control effect which is either spell stealing a target interrupting a target with counter spell or um applying a loss of control effect such as like nova you're going to get that primary stat increase so yeah, those are going to be your crafted pieces of gear. Anyways, let's get on to our general talents now. All right, so I'm just going to go down the list here. I'm going to first show you I have um, a couple different builds 
First, I'm going to show you the build that I'm running in Solar Shuffle, as that's going to be the most common build. So, we'll start with the general side tree. Like I said, we have Ice Barrier at the top. This is going to be your absorb, your shield. Every uh, 25 seconds, you get a nice barrier here, 125k. It's going to absorb just that much damage. And the passive effect that Ice Barrier has is it's going to slow melee attackers, whoever hits you, uh, whoever hits you, whenever they hit you back, they will. Uh, get a nice snare left on them. Then we have the ice block. Um, in case you want to block of ice, protecting you from all attacks and damage for 10 seconds, but you cannot move, uh, attack, or cast. So um, as Frost, you actually have two ice blocks. Uh, we'll go over that a bit later with Cold Snap. But yeah, block. You guys all know what block is. I mean, 10 seconds immunity. You come out, you have hyperthermia. You can't block again for 30 more seconds with this uh, debuff on you. And um, from here, you'll have Cold Snap, which is going to reset the cooldown of your barrier, your Nova, Cone of Cold, um, and Ice Block. So that's going to be the way that you get your second Ice Block. That's just going to be a passive ability that you have from playing Frost. It's not a talent anywhere. It's just that's part of what you get from playing Frost is you get that double block. But a lot of people also don't know that it resets your barrier and your Nova, which is um, also you can uh, use that to your advantage. Now we'll go over over uh, overflowing energy. Your spell critical strike damage is increased by 10%. Uh, when your direct spells fail to critically strike, your spell critical strikes um, chance is increased by 2% up to 10 for 8 seconds. So basically, there's not really much you need to know about this talent. It's a passive. It's going to just increase your crit damage by 10%. It's basically just a 10% damage buff. And whenever you don't crit, it's going to help you crit uh, because it's going to stack up if you chain uh, uh you know like a series of non crits it's going to increase your chance to crit not really much you have to know about this uh encanter's flow again not really much you need to know about this one it's just a passive um buff that's going to stack on you when you're in combat so you can see as it stacks up to five you're going to do more damage um and then as it goes back down you're going to do less damage um it's really really impossible to kind of play around this i don't really think you should be intentionally trying to play around this just kind of let it do its work passively um it's just a nice little passive buff that you'll have uh throughout the entire match but yeah it's good that you know it exists so uh you can see another uh winter's protection this is another talent that is actually very uh very good with the rework it got buffed it used to be a 20 to 40 uh, with rank 1 and rank 2 and now it's 30 and 60 it's going to reduce the cooldown of your ice block and make it a, thir uh, a, a 3 minute cooldown rather than 4 so I don't play this in shuffle I will show you guys my 3's build real quick so the reason why I play this more in 3's is because 3's uh, games have the ability to go a lot longer they're going to go to way deeper dampening uh, sometimes you especially as with the frost playstyle it's very damp so you're going to sometimes have like 10 12 minute games and then this is this is going to get a lot of value but in solo shuffle um this isn't going to get any value at all because the games only can last five minutes before the games time out and reach 100 percent dampening so i don't actually opt to take that for shuffle but it's good that you guys know about this talent spell steal is another one um steals a beneficial uh beneficial magic effect from the target um i'll have something on the screen that shows you what the best it's also in my Discord channel um, about what are the best buffs to steal, if you guys don't know. Basically, when you have a target targeted, uh, there will be a white outline around the buffs that you can spell steal. So you would want to, um, you know, learn which buffs are actually like, oh, you know, there's a power infusion from the priest. Like, that's a buff that I want, so I'm going to spell steal it. You're not going to want to spell steal too many times because as you can see on Mage, uh, as Frost, spell still costs around 20% of your base mana. So you only have about four to five spell seals before you completely tap yourself. Um, so, yeah, you want to be really greedy with these and save them for important moments. So, anyways, now we have Tempest Barrier. Not much you need to know about this. Whenever you blink, you're going to get a nice shield. I like this talent because uh, it's another buff that you get here. So you can see I actually track how many buffs I have. Um, I have two buffs right now that are purgeable. Uh, one, sorry, Arcane Intellect. Whenever you blink, you're going to get 
uh, a set of buffs and this is going to really help you purge protect it's just another uh trash buff that's going to really help you protect your altar time because blink is going to be a very important tool that you're going to use throughout the game um don't need to know anything about this remove curse this is going to be how you're removing curse uh curses from your friendly targets you can't really play without this because there's no way to go down the tree without it um but yeah this is going to be good to remove hex agonies havocs um yeah that's a whole different topic a little bit too complex to get into now but basically you can remove a curse um arcane warding is good sometimes reduces magic damage taken by two to four percent mirror images uh this is just a 20 percent damage reduction while the mirror images last uh it's not that great of an ability though because the mirror images actually disappear very fast so sometimes i actually don't even play with it but in shuffle where the games are really short i don't mind having it uh shifting power this is an insane ability it's going to reset the cooldown of all of your mage abilities um by 12 seconds it's going to be a channel it also does a big aoe splash you can see here it's going to damage these targets uh, and it's going to reset all of your mage cooldowns by 12 seconds so yeah really insane ability for being able to farm your cooldowns back i actually can't open up my talent tree because my mirrors are keeping me in combat <laughs> there we go yeah we'll talk <clears throat> more about this ability later but basically um all you like the best way you want to get value out of this talent is by having a lot of stuff on cooldown so now you see like if i were to cast shift of power i'd get way more value out of it because my barriers on cooldown my walls on cooldown my altars on cooldown my dbs on cooldown ideally you have some more stuff on cooldown as well like veins and counter spell and whatnot so yeah alter time huge huge ability for for mages huge um 50 second cooldown alter time uh, alters the fabric of time returning you to your current location and health when cast a second time or after 10 seconds so like i said um you're gonna be able to like you're gonna press it once and that's going to snapshot your location and your current health so if i were to press it right now which would be the most ideal time to press it is at the highest amount of hp possible right before you're about to take damage um, one scenario can be like uh you know you see the warrior charging at you you would want to alter because you want to alter at as high health as you can and then you kind of want to kite away from your altar location to kind of like bait out some more mobility and then once they connect on you or you get uh, a lot lower then you would want to alter back and this is going to be like one of your main defensive tools on mage that you really want to take advantage of um we'll talk about that later more in like the defensive slash mobility kind of uh, section of the guide but yeah cryo freeze uh don't really play this in shuffle or threes so i'm not going to talk about it don't really take these ever in any context quick witted um interrupting an enemy with a counter spell reduces its cooldown by four seconds so further incentive to you know land, you know land your counter spells you guys don't know what counter spell is it's your kick uh it's your kick sorry on mage so counters the enemy spell cast preventing any spell from being cast from that school of magic for five seconds so yeah very good talent there mass polymorph you never take this slow uh, a lot of people seem to not understand the value behind slow but slow is a very very good ability uh, a lot of people say like you know why do you take slow if you're a frost mage and you're slowing everything all the time well first of all you're not really slowing everything all the time you have to either cast a blizzard you have to either put your orb down you have to cone of cold down, which is melee range or you have to cast a frost bolt to get a slow on someone um so having this 40 yard range snare that you can spam on people you can use this to get combat like let's say you're sheeping a rogue and the uh you know the sheep is about to end and you want to be able to keep them in combat well you have a nice way to do that because it has no projectile like if you were to keep them in combat with ice lands, you know obviously there's like a projectile to that um you're gonna maybe be spending a proc that you don't want to like this is just such a good ability to have the ability to just spam slow on someone or you can slow multiple targets without having to commit uh, a frostbolt cast a ray cast a flurry uh, casting a blizzard you know going up to them and kind of coding them like very 
underrated ability to have. Um, I would recommend trying to get very used to this ability. Master of Time is going to be a great addition to Alter Time. It's going to reduce the cooldown by 10 seconds, making it 50 instead of 1 minute. And it's going to reset the cooldown of your Blink or your Shimmer um, whenever you return. So this is why Mage has such good mobility. Watch this. So like, Warrior charges, you Alter, you Blink. He charges you again, you Alter back. Now you have your two charges of Shimmer back. Keep in mind, when he uh, came to me, I Altered and Shimmered this way. And then whenever I alter back, you actually get refunded that extra shimmer charge that you used. So that's going to be huge. You want to make sure you're getting value out of this talent. You don't want to alter back with um, two shimmers uh, available still. You want to be able to, to use that shimmer while you have your alter up. Because you know that you'll just get it refunded whenever you go back anyways. So yeah, huge. Also, you can use this for mobility sometimes. Let's say your shimmer charged. Right? Like, uh, or sorry, you're, what did I say? Shimmer charge? Let's say you're, uh, like low on shimmers. You have no shimmers and you need to get there. Like, let's just say I use both of them, right? This guy's like 1% life and he's running from me and I'm, I'm slow and I can't get to him. And I, all I want to do is ice lance him because I know I'm going to kill him. You can just double tap your shimmer for another, or sorry, double tap your altar for another shimmer like that. So that you can get to him and kill him. So yeah, very insane ability. Uh, master of time is. Very, very good. Diverted Energy, a lot of people ask why we don't play this. This talent is nerfed heavily in PvP. So you can see here that it says heals you for 20% on rank 1, 40% on rank 2. In PvP, this is 5% and 10%, which is basically nothing at all. Um, so this is not a very good talent. I wouldn't recommend taking it. Ring of Frost, uh, summons a Ring of Frost for 10 seconds at the target location, which is going to be like on your mouse. Uh, enemies entering the ring are basically going to be polymorphed um, whenever the ring expires or the person whoever's in the ring uh, it's going to slow them so you guys can see the outer circle the little green circle here that's going to be where the edges are placed and that's going to be how you're going to aim your ring of frost uh, you're going to be aiming it so that the edges are hitting the target if you put it here in the middle for example this guy won't be frozen because he's just in the middle he's not on the outer ring so you want to make sure you aim it to where it hits the outer ring like that. And they're basically just going to get uh, rung, which shares the same DR as sheep. So it's just like a sheep, but on a different cast and you have to aim it. It's a good ability. Open up my three here, hopefully in a sec. There it is. Ice Nova. This is a really good ability because it has really good synergy with Supernova. Your frost bills do 20% more damage to frozen uh, or targets that are rooted and frozen. So this is going to be uh, Ice Nova and Frost Nova. So Ice Nova has a really short cooldown. And Ice Nova is also going to be reduced by time manipulation, which we'll talk about later. Casting Ice Lance on frozen targets is going to reduce the cooldown of your loss of control abilities, which includes Ice Nova. So basically the way you can think about it is anytime you Ice Nova a target, any spell that you throw into that is going to do 20% more damage than your normal version of it. And it has a pretty short cooldown. Every time you throw a Fingers of Frost proc 2, like with your orb, it's going to reduce the cooldown of your Ice Nova. But you have the ability to farm it back too. You can also use it as like just a normal Nova to root people, to kite them. That's another good use of it. Um, then we have Shimmer versus Ice Flows. So I'm pretty much playing, uh, they're both pretty good. I, I still think it's like largely personal preference on which one you play more because I think a lot of mages have a different opinion on this. Um, but basically shimmer is going to give you the ability to kind of blink while casting a spell, right? So you can see I was conjuring a refreshment there and I was able to blink mid cast. And you also get two charges of it, and it's off the global. So you can do a lot of things with this. Um, in my opinion, Shimmer is way more fun. It's going to allow you to play the game a lot more. It's going to allow you to sort of make more plays. Um, I really, really enjoy playing with Shimmer. And that's about 
all it comes down to. Uh, the only thing I really don't play Shimmer into sometimes are, is like double melee. Uh, like, I don't know, Warrior, Enhancement Shaman, um, Sub Rogues, let's say like Windwalker, Warrior. Just like double uh, Demon Hunter, Warrior, Demon Hunter. Uh, <clears throat> you know, just a lot of like the double melee classes. This is going to be where I'm taking Ice Flows because they have such short cooldown stuns um like warrior has two stuns shockwave and uh, stormbolt demon under has fell eruption and chaos nova and yeah i don't know when those are all kind of mixed together i don't really necessarily play shimmer into like warriors alone like for example if i were to fight a warrior in twos i wouldn't play shimmer but in shuffle when there's two different melee classes then i like to take uh, ice flows or if there's a sub rogue i like to take ice flows other than that i'm usually running shimmer i basically uh i've already you know told you about shimmer oh another thing about shimmer is you can't blink out of stuns so when you go ice flows you get the normal version of blink which we all know what this version of blink is we've had this since vanilla um it's gonna just let you get out of stuns 11 second cooldown um however it's on the global cooldown so you can't do anything while you're blinking like you could with shimmer however you do get this spell called ice flows which is going to let you cast while moving um as long as you have the buff up you have three charges 20 second recharge and it's, uh you can do it while casting so you can start a cast ice flows during it and then move with it um makes playing blinkstone a little bit more bearable uh makes it a little bit more fluent um but still don't like this playstyle as much but again sometimes you have to do it into like the double melees anyways let's continue on here um so then we have blast wave here so blast wave is going to be just this giant knock you can think about it sort of like an ellie where they have like a huge knockback um basically use it than any target kind of in your melee range here like maybe in this little um little area around you i don't know how it's i think it's eight yards yeah um it's gonna knock them back and it's gonna leave an, a nice slow on them or 70 percent for six seconds and it's not dispellable too so there's no way to like get that slow off unless they you know fade it or use some kind of movement impairing or like movement freeing ability um <clears throat> all right we're gonna continue to get on the list here so you don't really play this too much uh as frost because you're gonna be putting stuff on nova dr so much from frostbite which is gonna be over here it's gonna randomly root targets it's gonna make your frost nova dr all kind of weird and we're not playing with ice ward anymore like we were um last season or sorry last patch so it's less important to have imp frost nova uh rigid ice you don't really want because you only have one charge of frost nova uh if this said like all roots could withstand 80 percent more damage before breaking that would be insane uh but it's only frost nova so it's not that good toma ronin increases critical strike uh chance by two percent this is uh this is a fine talent to take because as frost you are only really doing damage when you crit you do have like not guaranteed ways to crit but you have a really really high chance to crit when you shatter we'll talk more about shatter um later then we have tome of antonitis it's going to increase your haste by two percent this is good for obvious reasons uh this just increased the duration of your boss wave or sorry the effect of it we're just cool down as well Energized barriers. Whenever your barrier receives melee attacks, you have a 10% chance to get a Fingers of Frost, which is basically an Ice Lance proc. Um, and casting your barrier is going to remove all snares. So this is huge for kiting. Uh, definitely remember to, that you have this. Like if you're snare walking, uh, just you know, knowledge is power. So as long as you know that your barrier is going to remove your snare like this. Like when you barrier it's going to remove that snare uh it's just really good to know that information um and also this works with mass barrier as well and i believe not 100 percent, but i believe the barrier also removes the snares on your teammates again not 100 percent on that but yeah 
Bridge of Winds, not really taking this, it's not very substantial. Uh, just increases the snare effect by like 5 and 10%, but I have to use two talent points to get it, so it's not very good. Uh, by the way, I do want to add, we're entering like the bottom section of the tree. So the mage uh, trees are kind of cut off into like these sections. So like uh, there's this little clump of talents here, but you need to spend a certain amount of points to like continue on the tree. You see how it's like that little clump. Then you get into this second clump here and you can see when we fill out that clump, then we are into like the final clump of talents here. So you really only have like a finite amount of points to spend down here and these are the most important. So up here, like these two clumps, um, they aren't really like that impactful. Obviously they're all very good, but you don't have a whole lot of changes here. Uh, not saying you do have a lot of changes down here, but this is where all of your like really powerful ones are. Um, so obviously we have flow of time. This is also nerfed in PvP. So this is just going to reduce your shimmer cooldown by two seconds in PvP. Pretty good passive ability. Um, then we have temporal velocity. It's going to increase your movement speed when you blink and when you return from altar. So again, this is kind of like a passive thing. But like I said earlier, knowledge in the game really helps you. So when you alter back, you know that you're going to get that movement speed increase. A lot of people always ask me like, Egg, why does it always seem like you have really like fast movement speed? It's because... You know, I'm, a, I'm like using these talents to their fullest effect. So just knowing that you're going to be moving faster from blinking or from altering back is very important. Uh, Ice Award, we never really take this. Freezing Cold, we never really take this. Time Manipulation, this is going to basically just give you the ability to farm certain cooldowns back. So the... If I just read the talent here, casting Ice Lance on frozen targets reduces the cooldown of your loss of control abilities. I don't know why they word it like this. They could have just said like the abilities that it affected, but this is going to mean DB, Ring of Frost, Ice Nova, Frost Nova. Pretty sure those are the only ones um, we can test now. I'm not, I don't think it does Blast Wave, but I'll just do it just in case. So you can see when I Ice Lance, it's going to reduce the cooldown of all of these four abilities here. My Frost Nova, my Ice Nova, my DB, and my Ring of Frost. It's only going to be when you have an Ice Lance proc, by the way. Not when you shatter one. So, like, if I were to throw a Flurry, this would count as a Shatter. Um, hold on, let me throw my Lance. Oh, wait. Actually, okay. It is not only when... It's whenever you Shatter. Um... Maybe I read that wrong. Casting Ice Lance on Frozen targets. Okay, I see. Yeah, so anytime you throw a Lance into a Flurry, into a Nova, or you're sending a... Uh, I didn't actually even know that. Uh, if you're sending an Ice Lance proc, those are all going to reduce the cooldown of those four abilities. Your Nova, your Ice Nova, your Ring of Frost, and your DB. So yeah, really good ability. It's going to make your DB cooldown feel a lot more manageable. It's going to give you your Ice Nova back so you can get more Sub-Zero value which is uh, going to be how you're getting those really big glacial spike crits because you're going to get 20% bonus on it. Um, and then we'll go on here. Accumulative shielding. I don't really run this talent often, but I was using it in lieu of using winter's protection. Is that how you use the word lieu in lieu? I was using it instead of using winter's protection in shuffle because like I said in shuffle, this doesn't get too much value since the games can only be five minutes long in shuffle. So instead I went with um, a cumulative shielding. The reason why is because in shuffle a lot, you're also going to be using mass barrier. So you have two sets of barriers and while you have that barrier active, it's going to reduce the cooldown. So let's say you like your barrier is getting shredded through. You have that second barrier and that's going to further reduce the cooldown of it while it exists. So I think this talent is actually not awful. Now we have Greater Invis. So um, in the rework, this is actually going to replace our normal invisibility, which I'm a, a little sad about. Um, but you can't give up Greater Invisibility, obviously. Greater Invis is your one of your strongest defensives on Mage. A lot of people don't understand how this ability works or how you use it. So you don't really ever use this as like an actual invis like in the opener this is what a lot of people refer to in wow as like your wall so a lot of classes have stuff that they'll refer to as their wall like this wall 
Um, so if, like for, for a feral, for example, this is going to be survival instincts. It's going to be that big dammer duck. For uh, warriors, it's going to be die by the sword or parry. They're going to call that wall. Um, paladins have divine protection. Not divine protection. I think it's... Yeah, Divine Protection, not Divine Shield. The thing that just reduces damage. Like, all classes have their own personal wall. Like, Windwalker Monks, Fortifying Brew. Um, this is your wall as a mage, your big damage reduction. It's a 60% damage reduction um, for 3 seconds after reappearing. So, when you're getting a uh, hit by a target, and let's say, you know, Warrior's sitting on you, he's bladestorming you, you're taking big burst damage, that's when you're going to want a wall. You can see when I cancel the invis, you're going to have that damage reduct. You're gonna, it's going to exist on you. So that's how you're using greater invis. You're using it as a wall. It's a damage reduction. Uh, but yeah. So DB is a 45 second cooldown that can be farmed back by time and nip. It a, does a small amount of damage and it disorients targets for 3 seconds in PvP. So the most common use of this is like DB into sheep. On the target that's db'd i just can't sheep the training dummies but floating sheep um but you're not really db sheeping too much anymore um the current mage playstyle doesn't really allow for cc like that to be done very often so a lot of the times you're using db as like an interrupt or as a way to kind of create distance so like if you're getting trained for example you know you have two melees on you you can db them into nova and then create some distance you know like or if someone's casting on you you have no counter spell no blast wave no way to like interrupt it you could just db it as like an interrupt um so there's a lot of different uses of db just try to think of it as like a you know it's one of your cc tools very good db double ring very rare that that happens but pretty good a little trick for aiming db by the way so you don't miss it <laughs> um if you look down you can kind of more accurately judge how far away you are from the target because it can kind of look like like it can kind of look like these targets are in range right here but they're definitely not in range i would say for db range you have to maybe be like right like right here i think if you're like any further away i'm actually curious if db will hit from here I think it will. Yeah. But I think if you were like any farther, like here, I don't think this would hit. Um, but yeah. And, and you can kind of see what I did too, or if you aim it in the middle, it has a it's a it's a cone shape. So it'll hit both if you aim it like that. So you always want to try to aim it like in the middle of where you're like if you're trying to hit two targets, definitely just try to aim it like in the middle of them. Um, but yeah. Ice Cold, this talent is not very good as of right now. It replaces your ice block and makes it into a wall, a 70% wall. But it um, no longer grants immunity, but does prevent... Um, or sorry, wait. But no longer grants immunity. Oh, okay. So it basically, it does let you move and it does let you cast spells. Uh, but it, it's not an immunity anymore. It's only a wall. So I don't think this is very good at all. I think the way that they could make this good is if it gave you or mastery kind of like evan s back in wad for arcane mages uh if it gave you or mastery during it it would be actually kind of cool because it would be like yeah you're giving up block which is your biggest defensive cooldown uh for or mastery for like an offensive use um but as of now i don't think this talent will ever see play so wouldn't recommend taking it time anomaly huge talent this talent is so good um at any moment you have a chance to gain icy veins fingers of frost or time warp so the big one you really want here is time warp time warp is going to give you um time warp yeah if you guys don't know what time warp is it's a pve ability uh it gives you 30 percent haste so just to show you like what it feels like you can see I now have 78% haste baseline while that's like up. And look at how fast like all of your gobbles are. You know how in like just look at how quick your abilities are resetting. This makes it feel so good whenever you get those procs. Obviously you can't use the actual time warp ability uh, in arenas. This is only going to give you procs of it. It's also going to give you icy veins procs um, like on fire mage if you guys were playing fire mage before this patch. You were getting like combustion procs. This is basically going to do the same thing for frost. It's going to give you um, icy veins procs. It just has a chance. I don't know. It's kind of random. Not kind of random. It is random. 
It also has a chance to give you Ice Lance procs too. So, um, yeah, not too bad. Very, very fun ability when you get that time warp proc at the right time. Like right before your glacial spike or something. Feels so good. And then this is the last talent that we have on the general side tree. Mass Barrier. Cast Ice Barrier on yourself and four nearby allies. Two minute cooldown. Not great, um, but it's not awful. I would personally like to see this cooldown reduced to like a minute or a minute and a half to make it a more appealing option. I don't think this talent is very strong at all. But um, the other option is Mass Invisibility. However, in PvP, in order, you see it's a five minute cooldown. In order to actually run this in PvP, not only do you have to talent into it here, but you also have to take a PvP talent, which makes it kind of hard to get because you can see here with the pvp talent it makes the cooldown four minutes shorter and it can now affect your allies who are in combat and that's how you're going to use it the way you're going to use mass invis is not only for like the opener but let's say your healer gets blinded by the rogue and the rogue is trying to sap it then you want to mass invis your healer it's a it's a really good team utility ability like that to like create a gap in um to create a gap in CC chains to help your healer drink. Um, you don't really play it too much in shuffle, I don't think. I think in shuffle, just having that extra little bit of um, tankiness from the mass barrier is gonna be kind of nice because there's not like a whole lot of team coordination type stuff in shuffle, so I wouldn't really recommend playing it. Um, massive is that is. As of right now, the only time in threes that I play massive is are into other frost mages because. Um, you want to be able to cancel their Ray of Frost cast with it. The cooldown lines up perfectly. One minute. Um, and another time is into Sub Rogues. So Frost Mages, Sub Rogues. Um, sometimes Marksman Hunters too to cancel uh, Aim Shot casts or uh, Rapid Fire casts. Or you could use it into Boomies as well to cancel Full Moons and Cyclones. So those are kind of the only times I, I look to run it in threes or into those classes. Other than that, I'm running Mass Barrier. The reason why you're not running it like it more often is because you have to give up concentrated coolness, which I believe is the PvP talent that you would want to remove to in order to get it. Um, and concentrated is kind of nice to have, so uh, <clears throat> that's why I don't really want to run massive viz baseline. All right, that's all I really have for the general side uh, of the tree. Sorry that kind of took a long time. I think it's important though that we go over everything in depth um, so that you guys can really know what's going on. Anyways, now that we got that part done, let's go over the Frost Talents. Alright, carrying on with the guide here, we're going to be going over the Frost uh, Talent Tree now. So, we're going to skip around here a little bit because a lot of this stuff is going to be explained later on in the tree. Uh, or like when we go over damage rotation, uh, like shatters, different combos, and that kind of stuff. So, a lot of the abilities that you're picking up here are just going to be your damaging abilities, such as Ice Lance, Frozen Orb, and Flurry, just to go over them real quick. Uh, Ice Lance is going to be just your instant cast uh, like ability that you have that you can keep throwing. However, <clears throat> if you read the bottom part here, your Ice Lance damage is tripled against frozen targets. So you never want to be using Ice Lance outside of either your Fingers of Frost procs or into frozen targets. And I will explain later when I go down the tree further um, on a million different ways to freeze the target. Another uh, big reason why freezing the target is so important is because of this ability here, Shatter. Um, it's going to multiply the critical strike chance of your spells against frozen targets by 1.5% and it's going to add an additional 50% chance to crit. So I don't know what this exactly comes out to math wise, but I think whenever you, you uh, fro uh, throw a spell into a frozen target, it's like a 70% chance I think to crit <clears throat> somewhere around there. Um, something like that. Yeah, not 100%, but basically shatter it's going to make it have a really really high chance to crit and that's going to be how you're doing a majority of your damage um so a couple ways that you're going to be generating damage on frost for one is you're going to have your frozen orb here it's going to launch an orb uh it's going to do a little bit of damage over the duration of the orb it lasts for 15 seconds does like 68k damage over that time not a, not that much damage but it's like a little bit of nice pad damage uh and it's gonna what it's gonna do is it's gonna give you a charge of fingers of frost and every three seconds as the orb is down it's going to give you another fingers of frost so just to show you guys what that is you throw it down it's going to give you a fingers of frost proc which just acts as if your ice lance is hitting a frozen target 
which is going to triple the damage. And then you're just generating those as orb is down. So yeah. Let me open up the tree here. Now we have uh, Flurry. So what Flurry is going to do, I'll just read it. Unleash a Flurry of Ice, striking the target three times for a total of 23,000 damage. The initial damage from Flurry is kind of negligible. It really, doesn't really do a whole lot of damage. However, it does leave a nice uh, debuff on the target called Winter's Chill. And Winter's Chill is going to make it to where your next two spells um, are going to act as if the target were frozen. So you'll see when I Flurry this target. It's going to take damage from the mage as if these spells were frozen. So when I throw ice lances into it, it's going to be kind of like I have a Fingers of Frost proc. So you're going to use this to shatter uh, a lot of different spells that we'll talk about as we go down. Um, but yeah, we'll keep going here. Brain Freeze. We're not really pressing Frostbolt too much in these builds. So we're not going to be taking Brain Freeze. Um, Everlasting Frost is going to increase your orb damage by 30%, which is actually a lot. Um, and it's going to increase the duration. So that's going to be kind of a good talent to pick up there. Winter's Blessing, like we talked about in the general tree, this is extremely nice because this makes it to where you don't have to play too much haste on Frost because you're getting that 8%, uh, that static 8%, and then you're also getting 10% more from all sources. Huge, huge. We have Frostbite, which is going to give all of your chill effects. And what chill effects basically means is like any like Cone of Cold, um, Blizzard, orb any of your frozen spells have a chance to activate frostbite even targets hitting into your ice barrier uh, are going to have a chance to activate frostbite and that's just going to freeze the target for four seconds then two seconds then one second as the root drs uh, this does actually dr your actual novas as well um, not ice nova because ice nova is its own dr but now we have piercing cold basically what this is going to do is it's just going to increase your glacial spike damage um, I believe this is 15% in PvP or 10%. There is some kind of PvP nerf modifier on it, whatever, but still really good because um, it's going to increase the damage of your Glacial Spike. And when you're not playing Glacial Spike, it's going to uh, increase Ice Cool damage. So either way, it's always good to have this. Um, now we have Perpetual Winter. That's going to give Flurry two charges. This is huge because Flurry is one of your biggest cooldowns, I guess. Um, your flurry charges are very important to manage and having two flurry charges to work with is very, very important. Very good. Lonely Winter, just going to increase the damage of your Ice Lance Flurry and Frostbolt by 15%. Ice Caller, this is going to make it to when your Blizzard uh, does damage. It's going to reduce the cooldown of your orb by 0.5 seconds. Um, so that's huge. If, for example, there's a big pack of like pets or every all the players are stacked together, you're going to be able to reduce the cooldown of your orb, which is going to give you a lot more Ice Lance procs. So that's something you really want to be looking out for. We actually have a talent down here that makes it to where when you uh, use orb, it makes your blizzard instant and increases the damage by a little bit. So you can see here when I put my orb down, I want a blizzard right away and then I can start throwing on my Ice Lance procs. And as the blizzard is hitting, you'll see it's reducing the cooldown and my blizzard is instant while orb is down so you really want to uh, make sure you get at least at least like two blizzards down um while your orb is ticking so that whenever a blizzard is or sorry whenever your orb is done the cooldown isn't just going to be like 40 seconds left on it it's going to be like 20 30 max so very uh important talent ice caller is Bone chilling, this is just kind of like a passive buff. It's just going to be a nice, like, whenever you chill a target, you just get a buff that increases your damage by 5%. Not really something you should pay much of mind to, but it's okay. Comet Storm, uh, this is, we actually are taking Comet Storm. It doesn't do that much damage. You can see, like, when I use it here. Let's say I shatter it with Ice Nova. Uh, Comet Storm does about, a, I would say about 120 to 150k. I shattered it with Ice Nova, so I got the sub-zero value. So it did a little bit more damage there. But basically, you kind of just have this free talent to work with. We're not going to put it in Brain Freeze because we don't cast Frostbolt. Frozen Touch is another Frostbolt talent. We don't want to put it in there. Blizzard has a chance to increase Cone of Cold damage, so we don't want to put it in there. Uh, because Cone of Cold damage Omega Lol. And then uh, Flurry has a 15% chance to generate two Icicles. That's like okay, but not that good. 
Um, Comet Storm is just kind of like that one talent that we need to keep going down the tree. Uh, and it actually does like, I mean, 150k damage isn't isn't no damage at all. So it's definitely solid, I would say. Not great, but solid. I think it's a pretty good ability. Uh, Frozen Touch. Frostbolt gains two fingers of frost 25% uh, more often. Like I said, we don't really Frostbolt with this build. Frostbolt is really bad um, after the rework. Does no damage at all. Wintertide. So Wintertide is kind of an important talent to understand how this works. Um, the important part that we're looking at here is fingers of frost empowered ice lances deal 20% increased damage to frozen targets. So basically what this means is that if I were to throw um, a normal lance into my flurry, my winter's shield debuff, like this, it's going to hit for like 76k. I mean, I had some like modifiers, right? But if I were to throw a fingers of frost into the winter's chill it's going to do 20 percent more you can see those ones hit way harder that's because i'm throwing a ice lance proc a fingers of frost proc into a frozen target so that's basically what winter what winter tide is saying is that if you throw a fingers of frost proc into some sort of frozen target either whether it be ice nova or um flurry if you throw those fingers of frost procs, it's going to do 20% more damage. So that's pretty good to know. Um, and, you know, that's how you're going to hit those really hard ice lances, like 80 to 100k ice lances. Uh, when you have your orb down, if you want it to be maybe like a little bit more bursty, you could throw a flurry down with your orb. So you could get the winter tie value. No storm, completely awful talent. Don't even need to read it. Flash freeze, um, each of your ice cold steals 10% additional damage. When ice cold deals damage, you have a 5% chance to gain fingers of frost. Pretty good for generating instant cast. However, we're not actually sending ice cold with glacial spike. Glacial is going to actually cap your ice cold at 5. Um, and it's not going to launch the icicles um, when you ice lance. So, but this will actually add to your glacial spike damage. So flash freeze, pretty good. Sub-Zero, we talked about this talent. A lot of people don't seem to understand how this talent works, or they don't really seem to understand the difference between something like this or like Wintertide. So Sub-Zero means, basically you can think about it like this. Any frozen spell you throw into Frost Nova, Ice Nova, or your Pet Nova from Icy Veins is going to do 20% more. That's basically what this thing reads, is... Um, any kind of root like frostbite ice nova frost nova or the pet nova you get um if you throw a frost spell into that it's going to do 20 percent more and you can obviously like say you have a winter tide if i threw an ice lance proc into a nova that's going to get value from both so that's how you're going to hit the really high ice lances like 100ks um because it's going to be doing 40 percent more damage that's how you get those 100Ks um, because it's going to be doing 20% more from being rooted and frozen. And it's going to be a Fingers of Frost Empowered Ice Lance into a frozen target. So it's going to get the 20% from here and the 20% from there. I hope that makes sense. Um, another way you're using uh, this is you're using this with Glacial Spike. So this is the main way you're shattering your Glacials is with Ice Nova. And then that's going to uh, make your Glacial Spike do 20% more. Sub zero, very good. Deep shatter, frostbolt increases uh, or frostbolt deals a ten percent additional damage to frozen targets. Yeah, don't press frostbolt. Icy veins. So icy veins got a little bit changed. It now is a two minute cooldown. Was three before the rework. Um, gives you twenty percent haste. Was thirty, and now it lasts thirty seconds. Was thirty five, I believe. Either way. Now it lasts uh, 30, gives you 20% haste, and is a two minute cooldown. Also, um, it, you know how like when you get hit, sometimes there's that like spell knockback that will remove that from happening. No spell pushback. Also, there's a second part of veins that is new. Activating icy veins summons a water elemental to your side for the duration of it. The welly um, abilities gives you frigid empowerment, increasing your frost damage by three percent up to 15 so basically what you can kind of understand by that um is that whenever you have your veins up you're going to be doing 15 percent more damage that's all it really means uh you also whenever you summon 
Here, let me move my camera over a bit so you can see when I pop veins, you can see my Welly's abilities. So these are the only two abilities you really care about. Um, water Jet and <clears throat> Freeze. So Freeze is like the Pet Nova. You can, uh, you know, do damage into that. And then Water Jet basically is going to be how you get Brain Freeze procs or Flurry Charges. So you can see if I throw a Flurry Charge here, whenever my Welly casts Water Jet, it's going to give me another one. So boom, I get another one. Um, so yeah, that, that's pretty cool about your Welly, that you get the Pet Nova and you get the Water Jet, or the free Brain Freeze basically. Splintering, uh, not the best talent, not the worst, don't really need to read it. Glacial Assault, uh, your Comet Storm now increases the damage enemies take from you by 6%. Valeria has a 6% or a 25% chance to call down an Icy Comet crashing into the target doing basically no damage at all. <laughs> uh, so you do play this sometimes if you wanted to play like a non-glacial build. So for example, into like Resto Shamans or something. I don't know. Sometimes I'll do this. If I don't feel like playing Glacial Spike, then I will go in here. But what that's just going to do is make your Comet leave a debuff on the target that makes them take 6% more after the Comet hits. Uh, and it's kind of nice too because when you spec out a Glacial, that means your Icicles are doing damage now. So yeah, that's kind of the only time I ever take that. Freezing Rain, uh, we already talked about this, Orb makes your Blizzard instant and do more damage. Thermal Void is going to increase Oxy Veins duration by 5 seconds, and your Ice Lances against Frozen Targets will extend your Veins. So you can see here, I actually don't have Veins, let me get it real quick. Oh, also, uh, Spike extends your Veins as well. So if I were to Veins, and then I start doing my normal Burst Rotation, you can see my Veins kind of goes up every time I press an Ice Lance or it just staggers you know like this is going to be how you kind of extend your icy veins a little bit um, as long as you're having good uptime on like your Ice Lance procs and stuff you can extend your icy veins quite a bit uh, which is going to be nice obviously for keeping your veins up for longer you can see that veins lasted about 40 seconds because it has a two minute cooldown. My veins just ended at 120. So yeah, you can really extend your veins for quite a bit of time. All right, chain reaction. Your ice lances against frozen targets increase the damage of your ice lances by 2%, stacking up to five times. Basically, all you need to know about this talent is that when you lance, it's gonna get stronger the more you throw. So every ice lance you're throwing is gonna just increase the damage of the next one. So you can get some really high damaging lances the more you're throwing. Splitting Ice is going to increase your Ice Lance and your Icicle damage and make them split to a nearby target doing 80%. So this is going to break a lot of CC, but in Shuffle, um, you don't really care about that. I would say the only time you really care about that is when you're playing with a Sub Rogue. And if you're playing with a Sub Rogue, then I would recommend just going into glacial assault and not playing splitting ice so it's pretty easy to just avoid taking this however this talent is really good for damage because it's going to also split your glacial spike in pvp it's not actually 100 percent. i'm not sure i think it's 80 percent or 60 percent that your glacial is going to hit the other target for so i think it's 60 so yeah pretty good talent there Fractured Frost, don't even need to read that, it has the word Frost Bolt in it. Um, while Frozen Orb is active, you gain Fingers of Frost every 3 seconds. Uh, yeah, that's like I said up here when we were talking about the orb. It's going to give you Fingers of Frost. It's the Geist, Frost Bolt talent, don't care. Ray of Frost. So, <laughs> Ray of Frost is a crazy, crazy ability right now. Um, it's going to channel an Icy Beam at the target over 3.7 seconds it's a channel one minute cooldown deals crazy damage every 0.7 seconds uh it's going to slow them while they are getting raid as well and the damage is going to ramp up over the course of the ray so um you can see each time ray of frost deals damage its damage and snare effects go up by 10 percent it's also going to generate you two charges over the course of it so it's very important to uh my screen blurry am i blurry 
can't tell. It's very important to get the full ray off because the final ray tick is going to be the hardest hitting. Um, and then since we're talking about ray, I'll go over this talent here, which is the talent that makes ray so strong. Is every time you consume fingers of frost, the damage of your next ray is going to be increased by 5%, stacking up to 50%. So basically, whenever you have a 10 stack cryopathy, I think cryopathy, your ray is going to do 50% more. And when you veins, this is going to give you 10 stacks instantly. Also, something to note, whenever you get a proc, an icy veins proc from Time Anomaly, it gives you this buff. That's pretty crazy. Um, so anyways, you can see here, whenever I would uh, pop veins, I get this buff. The damage of your next ray of frost is increased by 50%. So um, the best way you want to use ray here is you want to throw a flurry because ray doesn't consume the stacks of winter's chill so you can see it's 230k tick on the last one started at like 170 and then you get two procs from it as well um, so ray is a really cr really crazy ability um, hold on. my my welly is not letting me open up my talent tree keeping me in combat but yeah very crazy ability ray is Hailstones, this is going to make it to where you can generate glacials with ice lance. Um, previously, if you guys knew anything about glacial uh, or icicles, you would know that you would have to cast like five frost bolts to build up a glacial spike because frost bolts were how you generated icicles. But now it says like uh, casting ice lance on a frozen target, which basically means uh, fingers frost box, ice lancing into flurry, ice lancing into roots, stuff like that gonna have a 100% chance to generate an icicle so that's gonna lead you into glacial spike and glacial spike as we all know is that big two second cast that's going to take the damage of all of those icicles that you built up into one big icicle and then it's gonna be a big burst damage so every ice lance you throw is gonna generate you an icicle Four, five, and then you can th Throw that big icicle as a glacial spike, which is going to do massive burst damage. Um, and that's all about the frost talents. You can, there is this other one, Coldest Snap, which I don't think is very good anymore. Uh, basically, what this used to do, or actually, this is new with the rework, but they did nerf it. It makes it to where you have to hit three or more enemies for the cooldown of orb and comet to reset so i haven't really even played with this a single time since it's released but i think if you did want to get this uh you would just drop putting ice or a glacial spike so you could do this into like pet classes um if you wanted to because then you could just orb uh cone of cold like three or more pets and it would give you your orb back again uh, the reason why I don't think it's too much value is because let's say that you're fighting pet classes anyways. Um, you're already getting your ore back pretty quick with Ice Collar and Freezing Rain. So it kind of just seems like a little bit, I don't know, like not too much value. But I don't know. Again, I haven't really played around with it too much. But yeah. Basically what I'm changing, uh, just to summarize real quick, on the Frost Tree, if you do want to play like a no glacial build, like you... This is going to be more instant cast damage because uh, this is going to be way more instant cast damage because your icicles are going to send now with they're, they're not going to store up to build the glacial um, so every ice lance is going to be like an extra little bit of damage you can see from your icicles they're averaging about 10k it's like an extra 10k on every single lance because you can see the those little you see the lance throw and then you see a little icicle follow it shortly after watch the animation get a little icicle after it and those are going to be doing upwards of 20ks on crits um you can see if you throw it like into there you can see the icicles are, are actually a fair amount of instant cast damage so if you did want to play like a no glacial build um, you would take out the glacial, it would give you a little bit of extra pad damage on your ice lances, and you would pick up the glacial assault, which is obviously gonna give you that debuff. 
that's going to increase the damage that people take from you. So yeah, that's like a little bit stronger instant cast build if you just wanted to drop Glacial and get more ice, uh, ice cool damage, ice lance damage. Um, but that's about all I really changed, other than when I put with a sub rogue, then I drop splitting. But yeah. Now we can talk about the PvP talents. Alright, um, we can talk a little bit about the PvP talents now. Honestly, you're not changing too much here. Um, Frost Bomb, you're pretty much always going to play this. Ring of Fire, you're pretty much always going to play this. The only thing I ever change um, will be if I play Mass and Viz, then I will pick up the pvp talent for it never really playing any of the other ones however i will go over all of them now i just wanted to kind of give you like the situational changes before so frost bomb 15 second cooldown one uh, second cast places a frost bomb on the target after five seconds the bomb explodes doing a certain amount of damage to the target and it does a little bit of aoe damage to the other targets around them within 10 yards leaves a 70 percent snare on them if the from uh if the frost bomb is dispelled it gives you a charge of brain freeze and as you know brain freeze is basically the uh flurry the free flurry that does increase damage uh so this is going to be one of your main combo tool pieces that we'll talk about later once we get to the damage rotation portion of the video um but yeah this is a uh, one of your really crucial um abilities as as a mage and honestly i think uh, frost bomb goes are kind of what separates <clears throat> i would say it's like one of the key things that separates uh some of the mages you know like if you can always make sure that you have this before your burst rotation then it's going to add that little bit of extra damage this thing hits about like 120k crits sometimes so it it sometimes would make the difference between a kill or not so very crucial part of the uh rotation that we'll talk about later like i said ring of fire uh ring of fire is you guys probably know what ring of fire is at this point but basically it summons a ring of fire for eight seconds at the target location enemies entering the ring burn for 24 percent of their total health over six seconds 30 second cooldown and 1.5 second cast so um yeah like i said ring of fire is like a really good tool for doing big aoe damage on a bunch of people it's just like ring of frost where they need to be in this outer ring for it to hit the thing that's like really good about frost mage with these talents is like whenever you pop veins a very common thing that people do is they'll like hit the pillar ring of fire is a great tool for hitting people behind a pillar like let's just say there's three people here like behind the pillar lining you right they're sitting right here on this pillar as a frost mage you know you blizzard one side you ring a fire here and you can see you can like angle it to where it goes through the pillar so you can actually hit the people that are like standing behind it um so it's like a really good tool to get people off pillars or to punish people for sitting on pillars uh it's also just really good damage like if you want to get it off before a huge combo like these two abilities i would say are like the pre uh like if you can get them before your big burst then that would be a very good like extra amount of damage on your go uh like i said we're going to be talking about the damage rotation pretty soon but like imagine you get these pre damage on there and then you start doing your burst rotation um you know that damage is going to add up to a huge amount of extra burst on your go because like this whole time he's burning that whole like burst rotation i'm doing you can see the frost bomb and the ring of fire those kind of like that's an extra what a little bit over 500k damage just from placing those two things on a target before your big one shot combos which we'll talk about in a sec but yeah so these talents are really important um and we'll go over how to use them now we won't really go over the other pvp talents because you don't really play them too much but yeah okay so now I'm going to attempt to kind of go over the damage, a bunch of different ways to do damage on Frost. As Frost, you have so many abilities. You guys have probably recognized this by now. Um, you have so many different abilities that deal damage, just to go over a few. <clears throat> Lance, Ray, Orb, Flurry, Frost Bomb, Comet Storm, Ring of Fire. I think that's about it. Um, so there's a bunch of different ways to do damage. Uh, a lot of frost is going or sorry a lot of the way you're going to do damage on frost is going to come through like a lot of different combinations of spells um so i guess i'll try to just cover some very high value 
combinations of spells so that when you're in an arena match you can kind of make those connections for yourselves because obviously it's going to change pvp's very dynamic environment so obviously like uh stuff is going to change all the time maybe you don't have certain abilities uh you can just execute this like rotation like you can in pve right so um one of the the highest damaging combination that you can do i guess like the quickest uh the quickest and most deadliest combo is gonna be um you're gonna walk into the arena you're gonna ideally like i like to have slows on the target so they can't kite me while i do my burst then you're gonna like start with a ring of fire if you can if not that's whatever let's say you can't do it just for the sake of the video you frost bomb the target into a flurry then you would vein so you can get your 10 sac uh cryopathy buff and you want to flurry before this because when you veins the uh, Welly will start water jetting and it's going to give you a flurry charge. So you want to make sure not to like um, generate a flurry while you already have two. So you do this flurry, then you veins, and then you ray. And that is going to do huge damage. Um, and then you throw your two lances into the winter's chill. So that right there was already like a crazy amount of damage. Um, that's going to be like the quickest way that you can start generating damage. Then from there, you'll recognize that you have a lot of your veins left. And this is when you would start using other sources of damage. Like then you would throw your orb, blizzard, and then you start throwing your instant cast here. I would use this flurry charge as well because then you can get winter tide value on these next two ice lances to make them hit for 100k. Get your blizzard back down. Then you have two more ice lances that you can spend. Now your frost bomb should be back up. So you can go ahead and start to prep for your next combo. Uh, which could be something with Comet Storm. So you just get these like pre damage modifiers on there, throw your Flurry Comet Storm into that, and that won't absorb the Winter's Chill. And then you can just Ice Lance into your Winter's Chill, but after your Frost Bomb ticks. So there, as you can see, just from these like couple of different examples that I've shown you here, um, there is like Frost Bomb, Flurry, Comet Storm lance lance and then you can uh tr try to time the ice nova i'll, I'll show you what I, what I mean here so ideally like i said ring of five you can ross bomb flurry comet storm lance lance and then ice nova the frost bomb at the end for sub-zero on it that's like a pretty good um, combination that you can do and it's going to guarantee that comet is going to get the full value from shatter because keep in mind you're, you're trying to shatter every single spell that you do so that you can get the, the crit from it um, it's very cool how comet and ray both don't consume with your shield stacks so you can get the full value on them i'll show you one more time see how the, when i comment here it won't take it and then when i ray into it it also doesn't take the stack that makes it to where it's going to get shatter value um, the whole time so that's huge you also have um so just like on your veins i'm i guess i'll do like a little rotation including glacial spike now as well because glacial spike is huge um if you are gonna play it so that's gonna be another outlet of damage here i'm gonna show you guys now the most damage that you could possibly do in the game um, as a frost mage it's gonna be ring of fire if you can frost bomb Flurry, um, or sorry, Frost Bomb, uh, Glacial Spike, Flurry, Ray. Sorry, I had to like remember. So this is gonna assume that you have uh, a Glacial Spike built up. So you know, in the opener, you are just dropping your orb. You're doing your orb go, Frost Bomb, Glacial Spike, Flurry ray so basically you are shattering your glacial spike with flurry and the reason why you're flurrying is because then you can go immediately into your ray and it's going to get the winter's chill buff on there to make sure that every tick of ray is getting the shatter bonus and your frost bomb is going to explode at the same time your ray is going off so it starts with a huge shattered glacial into a ray immediately next global and also it's on top of that going to have um, the frost bomb. A, a part that I actually forgot to mention was in order to get sub zero on that glacial, because you're not using ice Nova, instead you're shattering a flurry. You can actually pet Nova when you have veins up to uh, make sure that your glacial still gets sub zero value. 
So yeah, basically you can t you can tell with Frost, you're just trying to use this use your abilities in combination with each other. A good way to approach it, like I've said already a couple times, is to try to start goes with Frost Bomb or Ring of Fire when possible. So Frost Bomb. I don't know. I'm just making shit up at this point. Frost Bomb into Flurry, into Comet Storm, into Double Ice Lands. You know, like. There's just a million different ways you can do damage. It's impossible to kind of put on paper just like a this is the best rotation over and over. Um, I have given you guys already a couple different like what I keep calling combos because it kind of feels like the, the, your entire go on Frost is like you just building up a, a million different combos. So I'm going to show you again here Ring of Fire, Frost Bomb. Glacial Spike, Blurry Pet Nova, Ice Lance, Ray of Frost, Frost Bomb Ticks. You get full value on all your abilities. Then you can Comet Storm, Shatter with Ice Nova, get another Frost Bomb going, get your Flurry on cooldown. You can Shatter this Frost Bomb with a Glacial Spike, but I actually mistimed that a little bit. Keep throwing your Ice Lances into Winter's Chill. Now that you kind of have no buttons, this is when you would Shifting Power to try to get all those. Uh, cooldowns back shatter that with ice nova go into a glacial spike you can shatter that with regular nova if you want ring of fire put your orb down blizzard first start spinning your ice lance procs not gonna be able to shatter this because i didn't have a flurry for it but that's fine so you can see here i'm building up my cryopathy buff every time you ice lance you're gonna go ahead and build that up so here's what you can do you can glacial spike into ice nova that's gonna be huge damage then frost bomb blurry comet storm ray of frost that's gonna be huge damage as well and then throw your ice lances on those last two winter shield buffs before they fall and yeah i mean as you can see here if we look at the breakdown this will be kind of what your breakdown will look like in game as well Ice Lance is usually pretty high. As long as your rays don't get interrupted, your rays will usually be about the second-ish. Then normally Glacial, if you're playing it, um, then maybe the rest like would be kind of in line here. Ring of Fire would probably be a lot higher the more it's cleaving different targets. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all it comes down to with Frost. You're just trying to start uh, your goes. You're trying to shatter your Frost Bombs. You're trying to shatter everything. You throw the flurry you can really abuse for the uh, flurry like i said since the winter shield debuff doesn't get consumed by anything except for um ice lance glacial and i think ice nova also consumes it uh yeah before you if there's anything you need to take away it's that to get your ray one shots do it into winter chill um try to get frost bombs preemptively before you do that um Shattering your Frost Bomb with Ice Nova is really good. If you can time a Glacial right before it too, that's huge. Actually, it doesn't look like you can root this target. But, um, and then if you are getting pressured very, very hard and you can't quite get all these casts off, you're gonna have to um, you're gonna have to be pretty good with precog. If you guys don't know what precog is, it's whenever you are. Um, if an interrupt is used on you while you're not casting, which is to say, um, if you juke, start a cast, cancel it. Um, precog is gonna go really, really nutty on Frost Mage. Um, basically, in like higher rated, lo uh, higher rated lobbies, you can't even get this like crazy damage off unless you have um, precog, because they're just not gonna let you do that much. Like Ray of Frost is huge precog uh, requirement at high ratings um, if you can get precog for your ray it's gonna absolutely melt people and then you know once you kind of spend all of these uh once you like spend all of your damage like you're in a situation where i'm in right now where i'm gonna shatter that frost bomb and that glacial try to get as many things on cooldown before you shifting power real quick and then you can just reset all of your damage and cooldowns with shifting and go right back into just trying to combine these in the most efficient way possible. And you'll pick up on it the more you practice it. Um, I'm still practicing as well. 
Uh, I don't claim to have like the rotation down perfectly, but I hope what I said could have been helpful for you guys. I think it may have came across at least when I'm like what I'm thinking right now is that I kind of like, you know, I hope everything I said makes made sense because I kind of just am speaking from uh, a place of, I don't know. To me, it seems like it maybe came off a little bit random, but I hope you guys definitely picked up something there on the damage. Uh, the frost damage rotation is, is really weird and complex. It's not like any other spec I've ever played. It's not like fire where it's like, okay, the best thing to do with combust is like fireball combust, double fire blast pyro pyro. And then, you know, from there, like it's either fire blast pyro or phoenix blade uh, pyro. This is like, okay, is frost bomb up? yes okay try to get the pre-frost bomb okay do you have a flurry charge yes okay use that right away now it's like do you have orb or comet storm it's like okay well which one do you use well comet storm is more burst frozen orb would start generating procs now your frost bomb is taking down so do you use an ice nova to shatter it to get one uh sub-zero or do you just let it go off and comet into ice nova and or ice lancet instead there's like a lot of different priorities um it's gonna feel very like overwhelming at first just as like a heads up whenever i played frost for the first two days let's see how long has the mage rework been out it dropped on tuesday so i've been playing the mage rework for about one two three four uh they just started on saturday so i've been playing it for about four days now um and i'm finally to a point where i can actually like recognize everything that's happening uh, or like recognize the best ways to do damage in the game itself so there's going to be a lot of a learning curve to it too so don't get like discouraged um if you are just going in there and you're just like not really doing your damage rotation the most efficient way possible uh, for me someone who's been playing mage for like 10 years a four day learning curve uh, might look a little bit different for you guys so just keep that in mind as well um but anyways yeah let's just move on now from the damage rotation to uh kind of how we can use our defensive cooldowns because a lot of uh like one part of playing mage is you know making sure that you're optimizing your damage rotation and doing as much damage as possible but all of that can only happen if you are making yourself a, a bad target to the enemies and you aren't dead so let's go over that now all right um defensive honestly uh, when it comes to defensives, what you're primarily trying to think about as a mage is uh, how can I avoid the most damage? As a mage, you're not exactly the most tanky class. Like, for example, a lot of other classes have passive damage, redu uh, damage reductions or passive healing. Like, warlocks have like the soul leech, and then they have a lot of, uh, they have like a netherwind armor type ability where it like reduces crit damage or reduces crit chance. They have like the uh, soul something that like makes their damage uh be transferred to the pet like shadow priest for example has the i forget what it's called but whenever they take damage they basically just have a 10 percent damage reduction on them at all times um they have desert prayer on like a really low cooldown so like on mage you don't really have like these kind of like heals the only heal you really have is barrier um so the main way and this is why mage is kind of unforgiving in a defensive uh and in, in a defensive context is because you have to know when the damage is coming to time your short uh wall which is only it only lasts three seconds so you have to time your wall very well um on like high burst moments and also having the into i think it's intuition is the word to know when the damage is about to come so you can alter at a high health so that when the damage hits you then you can alter back to that high health um and then also kind of having the positional whereabout and awareness to understand how you can use your mobility to help you avoid damage while also not excessively lining your healer still allowing you to do damage and uh all that kind of stuff so it's gonna there's definitely like a finesse type prowess to it all it's all very finessey in a way um i guess like one example i can give you is 
uh like making sure you are barriering uh off cooldown but not overlapping your barriers for example this is a good defensive tip like if i have a barrier right here and I'm, someone's hitting me and it's off cooldown it's like you might want to press this barrier but i actually track the absorb amount so like i wouldn't want to press my other barrier here because i still have 124k of absorb uh so yeah obviously you would not want to press it there now in terms of mobility basically you have a lot of mobility to work with just to explain a little bit you have two shimmer charges alter which is going to refund you a shimmer charge like i said earlier when we were talking about the talents you have displace uh displace is new with the rework not new but like we couldn't get it before now you can get it um basically how displace works is it's going to teleport you back to where you last blinked and it, it gives you a nice heal only usable within eight seconds of blinking so you can see when i blink here this little purple thing uh i don't really track the displacement beacon by looking at the purple thing it's more of like a mental thing like i know where i was when i last blinked um so like this is one example for kiting people like you're gonna what someone's gonna connect to you and you're gonna alter at a decent hp then you're gonna blink over here you're gonna tank some damage once they reconnect to you you get a little bit lower they you bait out some mobility by bringing them farther away you alter back they connect on you again at this point you can blink away once they uh connect on you if they find a way to connect even more you have displace here ideally you've taken some damage so this displace is going to heal you a little bit now now they can you know obviously you're still kiting at this point you have another shimmer charge available too which you can use to guarantee you get your shifting power off or something which is going to give you another shimmer charge and then at that point like you might be a little bit low on mobility here but your alter's coming back up and you still have your damage reductions for if um, eventually someone does connect on you and let's say you don't have any of these mobility options um, then you have your wall to kind of like hang some damage here um, that will get you to like your displacement and then you can displace back over there as well you still have your barriers and this entire time you're also trying to be very annoying with your blast waves to you know force them off you you're debeing them just to create like a little bit of a gap you're noving you're keeping them slow with orb and ideally you're counter pressuring this entire time as well so that they're not able to just like zug zug you so mindlessly so um i think a lot of uh me being able to teach you guys how to do this in, a, in an actual game will come from an actual gameplay example so i think it would just be best if we watched a couple games um, from a shuffle to kind of help you learn how to trade cooldowns and whatnot when to trade block versus when to use your mobility versus when to wall and all that kind of stuff so we can get into that now all right like i said i think the best way that we can kind of like wrap this whole guide up is to sort of watch some games in real time and i'll sort of deliver my commentary on these games so i'm walking in here i, I haven't watched these games yet so I, i'm not sure what's about to happen i don't have anything like any ideas pre-recorded i'm just going to give you my honest thoughts as they appear um i thought this lobby um the reason i picked these set of games i haven't watched them yet obviously but um and i don't really remember them either but i think it's gonna be a pretty good set of games to kind of base gameplay off of around because for one it has a wrestler shaman wrestler shamans are kind of hard for mages it has double melee cleaves like the one i'm facing now enhancement warrior Lots of interrupts, shears, groundings. There's an there's an affliction lock um, too. So you're gonna find out how to play double caster. You're gonna find out how to play with like melee caster. You're gonna figure out how to play into lock shaman. Uh, yeah, I think this this lobby has a lot of really good uh, like variety in a bunch of, of the different lobbies that you'll get. So I think it'll capture the most in terms of just like this whatever guy, like one hour. I don't even know what this is going to come out to be, like one and a half hours or something. But anyways, let's get into it here. <clears throat> you can obviously see the gateway is posted up. Um, so what do I do? I walk in immediately. I flurry and I just drop my orb. This is immediately so I can get my veins rolling. Like I said, you want to always flurry like before you veins because you'll see whenever your pet um is going to use 
the water jet, it's going to give you this flurry proc here. And I didn't want to over generate that. So um, you can see I get storm builder right away. There's a shaman and a warrior on me. So I'm not going to be able to start the go with like a frost bomb or ring of fire. Like I was discussing in the damage portion of it. Right. Um, so I get storm bolted here. Let's see what, how I react. Warbreaker. So I know cooldowns are being committed. The warrior has avatar, blade storm, warbreaker, dragon roar. Like this is his whole load popping off. I alter at a very high amount of health. And the first thing I do is I, uh, blink out of line of the shaman because i'm using shimmer so i'm able to do this all at one time because the shimmer is not on the global cooldown and i immediately start counter pressuring i get my blizzard down uh i alter back as soon as the warrior kind of like goes out of my line this is kind of like an uh, i would say an offensive alter back in a way um, it wouldn't be the worst thing ever if i have to trade my wall here but instead i'm able to use my mobility to further get away i'm able to actually land some cc here uh, and you can see that like my flurry, I haven't done like too much damage yet. I've only kind of done like a blizzard, uh, orb with like a flurry lance lance every now and then. So now at this point, um, the warrior tries to interrupt me there and he gives me precog. So this is perfect scenario now because I just landed CC, which is not something don't like get baited by watching me DB sheep here. This was a very blessed situation to have happen, um, was to get this precog right here. So I get the, the blizzard down, it's cleaving all these pets, it's building me my orb. I blink to mainly cut away from the DPS, but then I notice that the monk is right here. I just go for the DB sheep. I fake the warrior, and then look at this. I flurry into a ray. So flurry, ray, shaman, I have precog up. Uh, the healers in CC, this is perfect. His health is just getting absolutely destroyed. We get uh, a bunch of different cooldowns here. The monk has to use trinket revival. Uh, they're scared now. You can see my shaman has an earthen wall totem down. So I'm going to do my best to kind of stand in this. Um, I do end up using my wall too because the shaman pops bloodlust. So I'm a little scared. I'm stunned. My shaman has a very, very nice knock. Um, the reason I sit this stun, by the way, a lot of people when they play shimmer, they tend to say like, oh, I, I just die in stuns all the time. It's because as shimmer, you, you have to be a little bit greedier with your trinket. For example, I'm in Earthen Totem right now. I have two Earthen Wall Totems on me right now, which means I'm taking like 40% reduced damage. I think a lesser mage here would have saw their health dipping a little bit lower here. They would have seen two DPS on them with Bloodlust. They probably would have Trinket like blinked away or something. Um, but I know I have so much damage reduction right here that I'm good to sit that. I still have my... Um, I still have my trinket for next go you can see i did actually have a bad wall here so this would be an example of a time you wouldn't want a wall here uh, is when you have like your healer has already committed a lot of cooldowns for you uh, you can see no interrupts are available this is something that you need to be your eyes need to always be looking at omnibar you need to always see when people have the uh the interrupts available for you or else you're gonna just get caught in this infinite feeling like everyone always has interrupts for you um, there are times i promise you guys when people don't have interrupts for you you just need to be aware of those times so that's very crucial so yeah i'll just keep watching here pop my barrier now that they're downstairs a little bit i'm trying to look to get some sort of like pressure rolling some offensive pressure so I try to get a glacial spike off. However, the shaman has shear. I notice this because I see on my omni bar that he doesn't have it. So what I actually do is I go for like two quick little fake casts to attempt to get precog. I just backed it up here so I can show you that. Shaman has shear. Try once, twice, not giving me precog. So what I opt to do here, since they have interrupts, I, I cast a ring of fire. This is solely to bait interrupts. I know that I'm going to get interrupted on this, but now since I just got interrupted on it, you can see immediately I start casting Glacial Spike because in my mind, I already know I'm going to get kicked, right? I know 100% I'm going to get kicked on this Ring of Fire, so I'm already casting Glacial the second I get kicked on it. Ring of Fire, Glacial, Blink Away. Um, the reason why I blinked away is because I thought I could like not outrange the Shear, but Shear has like a directional thing to it. You have to be facing the target, I'm pretty sure. So I, I blink through him thinking that I could get it off in time. I actually do. I do get it off. 
Um, actually, I think he like mistimes it or something. Gives me precog. One thing after my glacial is I always throw a lance in there because the glacial roots the target as well. You can see here. And if you throw an ice lance into this nova from the glacial, you get sub zero value from that. Now they're all stacked here, so I see a really big opportunity for Ring of Fire. I get that down, Blizzard, so I can farm my orb back, throw my orb, and now I'm just going to spam lances here. Not trinketing that because I know that he can just interrupt it. And now I do opt to trade one of my ice blocks here, and I'll tell you why. So Warbreaker was popped. I have um, a set of weak auras that I will have for you at the end of the video. That kind of alerts you when big cooldowns are popped. So you really want to try to trade. This is like goes back to trading defensives. Is this is the warriors pop here? Um, I don't have altar. I don't have greater invis. My shaman doesn't have earthen wall for me. Um, what I could do honestly is use my mobility to try to get away from the warrior because he doesn't really have a whole lot. Um, however, I think my thought here was that I would rather save my mobility to help me get offensive casts off later in the game so i opt to just trade a block here because i don't want to burn through all my mobility trying to live through this um because later in the game i want to use my all uh mobility offensively to help me get glacial casts off to help me get ray casts off help me get frost bomb casts off by shimmering uh, in the middle of those casts so I get a frost bomb. I start this little interaction here. Looks like I'm not actually able to shatter that frost bomb instead of get away because I'm kiting on doom winds here. So this is shaman's cooldowns now. So I know I'm not quite out of the woods yet. So here I'm trying to generate some offensive pressure. I see doom winds is being popped. I opt to just gate out of there, which saves all of my cooldowns. Which is very good. Saves all my mobility. They get knocked off the map, which is huge. So I notice the Shaman does not have uh, Wind Shear, and he does not have Grounding Totem. So this is a perfect time to go for a Glacial Spike. Oh, actually, it looks like his Grounding Totem somehow came off cooldown, which was a bit unfortunate. Try to get a Blizzard down. I get Bolted here, so I opt to Trinket this one. My sh uh, Okay, this is going to be when Remove Curse comes in handy. You can see my Shaman actually gets Hexed here. So you can see I'm going to press remove curse. I have macros to remove curse from my teammates. So I don't have to do a uh, mouse over or whatever. I also pop altar time at 100% HP as well. So that's a good altar. Try to land follow up CC off of this fear by double shimmering. Not often will you double shimmer, but since I had altar up, I knew I would be refunded a charge. So I, I didn't mind using double shimmer here. I see the fear. I get CC off of it. He double stuns. This is perfect. I mean, this this game is so good. You can see I have my Ray of Frost with my 10 stack buff because it was highlighted here. Oh my god, this game. We actually played this game insane in Shuffle. I've never seen this coordination in Shuffle. This is crazy. But yeah, you can see I have my big buff here, my big Ray. But I don't just want to Ray right away, right? Because I don't have a Winter's Chill on him. I need to have that uh, ability to shatter my Ray. So I have to start to go with a Flurry. I actually cancel my altar time here because if you if I would not have canceled my altar there, it would have expired and canceled my ray uh, by bringing me back. So I cancel my altar. The sheep sits. I flurry. I ray. 85k, 100k, 65k. I throw in the lance, and he goes down. So that was a really like well executed game in terms of trading my cooldowns, respecting my shaman's cooldowns, getting pressure out while I was being trained. Uh, responding accordingly to their cooldowns that they popped, saving mobility to later uh, transfer that into uh, offense. For example, if I didn't trade my block, when I did, I wouldn't have had the double shimmer mobility to be able to land the poly off of the sphere, right? So that game, honestly, was that was perfect. <laughs> so now uh, you can see here, that was a really good lobby for us because we were obviously playing mage lock into like double melee which i think we should win that but now we're playing like maybe a slightly unfavorable or like this is going to be a harder lobby for a mage because uh warlocks are pretty hard to play into as mage and so are shamans um so we can see how this game goes here so again i'm trying to get that i'm trying to start the go off with frost bomb i send the flurry right away 
Now you don't want to immediately start lancing into that flurry because you want that uh, this flurry debuff to shatter the frost bomb you just applied to. So when you do this, you're looking to kind of fill like two to three seconds worth of globals um, to get to the frost bomb shatter. So I orb and I blizzard. No, I I just veins and start lancing. Um, oh yeah, because he dispelled the frost bomb. So if you guys look here. I get a slow up on the target to ensure that he doesn't. He can't just like line my cast. Frost bomb, flurry, but he immediately dispels it. The healer does. Um, so at this point, I'm trying to get a, a nice blizzard down too, because you see this like pack of pets. This would be insane if I could get a nice blizzard right here, but unfortunately I don't see it. Kind of tunnel visioning some ice lances here. Get a nice glacial with ice nova. You can see it crits for like 300k glacial into ice nova. It's going to give you sub zero value on that, so it's going to do big big crits i go for the blizzard late um i definitely needed to blizzard a little bit earlier because you can see my orb now has 40 second cooldown where if i would have just placed that one blizzard instead of tunneling only ice lances um like you see here i just like send like three ice lance globals back to back while i still have my instant blizzard available so definitely a big uh mistake on my end go for the blizzard a bit late Kill the grounding totem with fire blast because fire blast doesn't have a project or it doesn't have like a travel time. Best thing to use to kill grounding totems. Uh, you could even look to maybe spell steal this bloodlust because you can see he doesn't have a lot of buffs. Maybe you wait for this to fall and then you use two spell steals max to get that. Instead, what I have to do is go for a little combo here, a little a little combo. So we, I just backed it up. Um, Grounding totem, I kill it. I start to go with a frost bomb. So I'm, this is me trying to like, you know, do one of my combos I'm talking about. Frost bomb, flurry, ray. Because uh, I have that big ray from popping my veins. And then what I do is I try to blink out of sheer range here. But I unfortunately didn't do it quite fast enough. Um, so it did get interrupted. This is one of like the most feels bad situations is when you're getting interrupted on your ray like this. Um... That's why I said, like, against good players, like, not having precog is, like, really unfortunate. Um, hold on one second. I want to get rid of this play button. 243.30. This will be worth it, I promise. It would be very annoying to have that play button. Two, okay, there we go. Back it up now. So, yeah, we get interrupted on the ray. Um, I try to get a ring of fire down as a way to sort of eat interrupts. Like I said, when interrupts are present, um, I'm always usually trying to eat them by either trying to juke a couple times. You don't want to spend too much time juking, or you can start with Ring of Fires to eat interrupts. Get knocked. This game isn't quite going my way. This is definitely like a rough game so far. Start Frost Bomb, Glacial, Shatter it. But you can see it's not like timed right because the Frost Bomb isn't going to tick on the frost nova or on the ice nova so i don't actually have a way to shatter this yeah there was an unshattered uh ice nova or sorry frost bomb still hit 85k but not as optimal as we could have made that rotation there so i have a lot of stuff on cooldown here my ray is on cooldown my orb my veins uh all my shimmer charges so i'm opting to go for a sh uh, shifting power here shaman luckily can't shear it He's playing right on top of us. I drop an orb on him. Uh, when you get frostbite procs like this, it's really good to lance into them because you get sub-zero, which is that extra 20% damage. So I'll show you here. Like I orb, my big debuff shows that he gets uh, rooted, which is the frostbite root. Uh, so if you can lance into that, especially if you have a fingers of frost, you're going to get winter tide and sub-zero. 40% more damage. Boom. Um, I get coiled here. I accidentally give the lock precog. So your counter spell is something that we haven't really talked about yet. Uh, you have to be very careful with your counter spell because obviously if you miss interrupts, you're going to grant the enemy team precog. And depending on what class you're giving precog, that can actually lose you entire games. So the best way to approach kicking is to kick at about... 90% of the way through the cast. It's very hard to master. Trust me. I, I, I'm i still working on it myself. But watch this Warlock when he casts here. 
you can see he casts like a quick little uh, cast of Drain Soul. And then look, he casts for like barely any time at all. And then I, I try to CS it. You never want to do like really quick interrupts like this because they're very easy to juke. A lot of people when they juke, they do that very quick like start it for one second, cancel it because it's very risk free. So you don't want to just reward their risk free play. You want them to have to actually take a risk by making sure this cast is very like they have to commit to it very long. And then you kick like right here, ideally would be how you how the like how everyone in the pro scene has like agreed to uh not get juked or like that is like pretty agreed upon that that's the best time to use your interrupt it's very hard to master um and also switching up when you kick is also very important for example there are a couple pro players who um like my personal experience into them is that i know their kicking pattern because they're so good at not kicking till the end that it's actually kind of easy to juke them because I know that if I cast something to 90% and cancel it, that I can most of the time get precog into them because they like to kick very late. So it's kind of like a, a mental warfare game too, you know, especially if you're fighting the same players. Um, but yeah, enough of that. So I pop wall here because it's doom wins. Doom wins gets popped. So this is like huge damage um, coming out from the shaman. So I actually alter and I wall and I jump off the map and I'm just going to wait for doom wins to be over. While I'm down here, I try to get a ring of fire up top. You should be able to see it. Yeah, good. So that's just min maxing, like waiting out the doom wins, still doing something productive, which is getting a ring of fire from down there. So that's going to be able to lead very nice into my damage rotation that I'll have coming up here. Um, I have another weak ore here. Warlocks have a spell where they can kind of like make sure people can't crit. So this is going to say that uh, my warrior here has amp uh, curse weakness on him, which means he can't crit any spells. So you're going to see me immediately dispel that right there. So I dispel this weakness. Try to get precog. Kill that with fire blast. Glacial looking for precog. Didn't quite get it. Got kicked. I actually interrupt this hex with a dragon's breath. They have no kicks, no ground. I have, a, I have like all of my sources of damage. So ideally, I start to go here with a frost bomb. I'm gonna trinket this aggressively, and I'm going to glacial spike, and I'm gonna shatter this with ice nova, and it's timed perfectly because look, my frost bomb is also about to shatter. So glacial spike. Unfortunately, none of them crit. So when you shatter, you have like. Like I said, I think it's somewhere like 67 to 70% chance to crit. Unfortunately, we got very unlucky. And the Glacial didn't crit and the Frost Bomb didn't crit regardless of the fact that we shattered them. Or else he would have definitely got a one shot. But that's alright. So I also go for a Ray of Frost here, but this is actually a really trash Ray for one reason. It's that I don't have a 10 stack cryo cryopathy buff. Um, I only have five. So this is only going to be a 25% increased damage Ray. And I immediately get sheared on it too, so it's awful. Uh, another thing is Observer. You want to make sure you kill this. The best way you can kill this is if you have an Ice Lance proc. Since I don't have an Ice Lance proc, I can't really kill it right now, so I'm just ignoring it. Uh, I don't want to like commit a flurry charge on it. That would be kind of dumb. So instead, I'm just going to opt to line it. I'm also standing in my Shaman's Earthen. Kill the ground. Kill the stream. Because I had an Ice Lance proc. Best way you can kill totems is with, is with Ice Lance procs. So yeah. I drop a double ring of frost here. Since uh, the monk just conveniently happened to be laying right in front of me with the fear. So I flurry this guy. Alter because he gets a Ascendance proc. So you can see I immediately respond with a high health altar, 74%. And I'm immediately counter-pressuring him because there's a Ring of Fire, Winter's Chill. I'm Ice Lancing into it. And yeah, I knock them off the map too. And I have to go pressure this Warlock who's alone down here. You can see I actually used my Pet Nova. This is the first debut of Pet Nova. Um, I Pet Nova the Shaman over here so that he can't go and save his uh, guy, or he can't like, yeah. Basically, it's just being really annoying and uh, just pet noving them. Pet Nova, 
pet nova ing him there i find that using the pet nova for cc like this is actually very it catches a lot of people off guard so we get cocoon there and then i actually throw a lance into the pet nova it doesn't crit i'm the unluckiest player ever glacial spike shimmer to guarantee the cast huge crit there so you can see here i get a uh it looks like I have so much haste here. Yeah, I get a time anomaly proc. So this is going to really allow my... Frost, when you're in this situation with veins and time anomaly, it's so high APM. APM meaning like... There are so... Watch how fast your globals are. Like, you got to be really quick in these scenarios because this is what's going to make the difference between like very good mages. Look at how much damage I have. Like, I have my trinket proc. I have time anomaly. I have... Uh, my frigid empowerment buff because I have veins up. I have my orb down. I have icy veins. Um, I have a 10 stack buff here. I have my chain reaction. I have my, like, I have so much damage right now. Like, you don't want to be choking in these scenarios and not doing the most efficient globals possible. Um, so Lance, 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 Glacial, Shimmer, Ice Nova, Lance. I just basically killed the shaman. This is a dumb frost bomb because he's like 1% life and I get kicked. Looking back at it, I should have just thrown another lance. Let's watch again. But yeah, like uh, you can see these globals are really efficient here. Also, some point in the game maybe could have rebuffed. Maybe he would have died if I had that 5% intellect as well. That's something to think about. So anyways, while I'm interrupted, I'm not going to sit here and do nothing. Instead, I'm going to shifting power. You can see when you're interrupted on Frost, you still have Fire, you still have Counterspell, Shimmer, Displace. Uh, you have uh, shifting power. You have a lot of different spells, even though you're only kicked on Frost. So using your other schools while you're interrupted is also huge. I cast a Sheep on the healer there. Why not? Because no Shear. Try to get a Frost Bomb. I flurry it, I lance it. You're going to see I don't throw another lance here. It's very like common that you would want to like flurry lance lance, but I'm going to let this winter's chill sit for a second so that it will shatter the frost bomb. Shatters the frost bomb there, hits for 100k. I have to block. Actually, so that's good. There's something defensive happening in this game because so far I haven't really had to play too defensively. I had really good altar times on the ascendance procs, on the doom winds. Uh I've been, my shaman's been doing a great job healing through the Affliction Warlock Rots. So you can see here, I just get a bit low. And uh, this is also pretty good to, to throw out here is that the Affliction Warlock's big go, we've been talking about big goes, the Affliction Lock's big go is the Soul Rod here. So you can see he casts Soul Rot. So I kind of wait for him to commit it on me. So the Soul Rot goes off on me, which means he's committed like his damage. Um, then I block it off before he can soul swap it. Because what Affliction Locks want to do is they want to like get dots on you and then like snapshot those. They can like kind of steal those debuffs on you and they can instantly swap it to other targets. Wait for him to commit the Soul Rot and then block it. This is also their Lust. They have no interrupts, no grounding. So uh, what I opt to go for here is, look, you can see me loading up a flurry here. The reason why I'm doing this, by the way, um, so you can see that I came out of my block early for this because I knew I could one-shot this guy. I load up the Glacial, and this is, goes back to the damage rotation combos that we were talking about. I Glacial into Flurry. So even though I'm not shouting with Ice Nova here, what I'm going to be able to do is I'm going to be able to immediately go into my Ray of Frost after this because I'm going to have the Winter's Chill debuff. So Glacial... Flurry into Ray, and it almost kills him again. Um, honestly, you could like go back and you could say like if you had a frost bomb or a ring of fire on the target, he would have died here. You can see I didn't have um, any of those available, but this was honestly more of like a trying to catch him by surprise kill. So yeah, I don't know. It could be said that I could have done some stuff differently, but. I was just trying to one-shot him. But yeah, I mean, like, he almost dies. At this point, with how low this guy is, I'm looking to blink CS this heal, I think. I I should have. So I try to do it here, but he's out of line. I just was very unaware in that moment, unfortunately. 
I displace back because I realize I'm kind of overstepping my uh, grounds there a little bit. I went in for an aggressive blink forward play, which in this uh, this day and age, I guess, as mage, like a blink in aggressive play is something that you don't do very often. Um, so when you do it, you want to have make sure, you want to make sure you have a getaway plan. So in this place or in this case, I have displacement to get away. So I blink CS. It doesn't work out. Uh, it's getting sketchy because he has sheer and grounding's up. So I just displace back to safety. And then I just opt to hit the target that's closest to me. At this point, it's the Warlock. So I load up the Frost Bomb on him. Flurry, Lance, Lance. And then I Ice Nova right there to shatter the Frost Bomb. It's about to tick really hard. It's also really good value because the Shaman is stacked. So it's going to hit them both. You can see here, does big damage to both of them. 121k. Get the orb down, get the blizzard down, and then I'd look to try to make a play to like knock the shaman really far from his healer. Didn't quite work because blade's edge is a little bit weird sometimes with uh blast wave, sometimes it doesn't necessarily work. I think also in this moment, what I'm looking to do is blink CS the healer again, but I get really low. I wall <laughs> and then I cold snap barrier. So you can see I actually agreed my cold snap a lot too. Hold on. Okay, sorry, I had a whisper or something. Um, so you definitely want to save your cold snap for when you are like, for situations where you, because there are going to be situations where you can like barrier and then snap barrier um, or have two Novas with it as well. So I wall, snap, barrier. And since I've already committed wall at this point, um, I'm trying kind of hard to like greed here, um, greed this damage global because this guy's almost dying. So I didn't really want to block there. Um, but yeah, it was definitely really sketchy. Anyways, let's just get on to the next game here because it's kind of rolling on. But I'm sure you guys appreciate how in depth I'm going. Like, I don't know. Obviously, this video is going to come out to be very, very long, but I hope you guys can appreciate the depth that we're going into for these games because i mean wow isn't something that you can just teach in i don't know like youtube right now like the i don't know not the meta but like in terms of like making content you want to make sure things are very quick and like keep up with people's attention spans but i feel like wow is is not a game that can be captured or i can't really teach you guys efficiently how to play a game um or a spec in that short amount of time so i feel like it's justified to make the guides a bit longer as long as the depth i'm able to go into is something that will actually be useful <laughs> um because i don't really like to make guides that aren't useful personally but anyways let's keep going on here so frostbomb the warrior he shot or he reflexed it so at this point you know that is already out the window I flurry veins, very common here because remember when you veins you're gonna get a free flurry. So you definitely don't want to have two when you do it. I'll keep reiterating that till the day I die. Um, so something I want to be very aware about is uh, the warlock's interrupt here. This is the one thing with my veins up. I definitely don't want to get interrupted on frost here. So I orb blizzard flurry lance lance. Lance Blizzard. This is a very efficient rotation so far. Um, I'll kind of explain why. So when you have two Ice Lance procs, hold on, we'll see here. So when you when you orb, your globals become very important because you don't want to over generate Ice Lance procs. You can only have two fingers at the same time, two fingers of frost. So if I have one fingers of frost, I will opt to do other stuff like Blizzard or Flurry because I know that I still have time to use those prep globals like Blizzard and Flurry. What this so like basically what this Flurry is gonna do is it's gonna make sure my next two Ice Lances are gonna have Winter Tide value, aka they're gonna do twenty percent more. The Blizzard is going to reset my orb, and I don't have to start lancing yet because I only have one proc. So I'm gonna get my second one here in a second. There it is, and now both of those lances are way burstier um, because it was done into Winter Tide. 
And now you can see, since I have no procs, I get my blizzard down. Then I start to just kind of change my priority towards Glacial Spike. So I get the Glacial Spike going. I shatter it with a flurry because I want to go into my ray here. So I ice lance first for some reason, I'm not sure why. And then I go directly into a ray of frost. It almost kills him. I have huge damage right here. They have interrupts available. So I'm going for the ring of fire first. They don't kick it. So um, I'm going to go the warrior here, but I'm going to position myself at a uh, to where I'm kind of like far enough from the warlock where he can't quite interrupt me. So I get the frost bomb, flurry, lance, lance, glacial. And since I have so much haste here, I knew I could fit this glacial spike cast before my uh, frost bomb was going off here. So frost bomb, glacial spike, boom, big glacial, big frost bomb. He did have parry up for it, so good play by the warrior. Shifting power goes out, and you can see, I mean, guys, my globals, sorry, my globals this game have been so efficient. Uh, I'm just doing 100k DPS. Like, this is the power of how much haste you're able to have on a frost mage and how much damage you can do on a frost mage as long as you're making sure that you are doing the small things, getting the frost bomb. If you don't have the two ice lands procs, load up a flurry so that you can get the winter tide value trying to time all of your procs together to make sure you're getting good shatter value on your frost bombs and stuff. Oh, we're going to have this dumb uh, play button here again. We'll just leave it for now. Um, So you can see Blizzard, Orb. It's not like me. So I do like kind of aggressive plays here. I get punished a little bit, so I can't really play. I got to get rid of this fucking play button. What are we at? 247.40. I don't know why Twitch highlighter does that sometimes. It's annoying. Yeah, we tried to make an aggressive play here. We got we got kind of a uh, shit on for it. So I'm going to just go back to my defensive positioning. Because on mage right now, that's kind of what you're doing. You're just sitting back really far, and you're just... Doing big damn. Occasionally, you can look for those blink counter spells, blink sheeps. Very rarely. You can see I don't cast sheep a lot. A lot of people will come into my stream like, when do we cast sheep? It's like, uh, never. You can see I mass barrier my team. Gets a nice barrier. Very good into affliction locks. I don't know why I cast this ring. I do get a very nice situational. Ask yourself. Would you have? Would you guys have gotten this precog right here? Okay. So I'm still in my like CC mindset. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna try to CC this monk. I get a ring on him. I notice the warrior's right on me. I cast a sheep. I juke it real quick. Get that precog. Full sheep. Fire blast the reflect. And then this, we're gonna get some good momentum off this. So one, like I said, precog can change the game. Look at the momentum now that we've generated from this. Um. We got the sheep, we got the frost bomb loaded on the guy, we got a lasso on the warrior as well from my shaman. And um, things are looking good offensively here. Warlock doesn't have an interrupt for a second either, so we can go ahead and get this ray with our frost bomb flurry. Huge damage coming in. He has to revival it. We're getting hella cooldowns. I still have more damage here because I have a glacial spike with an ice nova. Throw in that lance after the glacial spike because the glacial spike roots them, gives you that nice root. Warlock has kick available, so we're starting the game. We're starting the cast off with the Ring of Fire. Maybe get a potential kick out of the way. Nope. Flurry. Lance. Remove Curse. Just to dispel Agony. I'm not sure if that was worth global or not. Words on me. Blink Altar. Glacial Spike. Try to juke kick. Displace back before I commit canceling my altar. Because uh, I don't. I, I didn't really want to alter back to a lower amount of health but i still have a lot of time left on my altar so i didn't want to necessarily just write it off as a bad altar yet big glacial there oh this was actually a delicate play let me try to break this down so the warrior charges me i alter blink away on his cooldowns i glacial spike him i have to juke it because he leaps to me so i thought he was going to leap kick me he also tried to reflect it so at this point with the reflect I'm just going to opt to go to the lock, and I know I have a shimmer charge to be able to blink away from the warrior so he can't interrupt this. I also have an ice nova 
to guarantee shatter it. So boom, big shatter. I alter back because the warrior's positioning was getting uh, really close to me. I, I noticed that they're all stacked here, so I drop an orb on them, really good value. Blink into the link, get a blizzard down, knock them all really far from each other so that they can't, the mystery can't effectively heal. Barrier, and now I'm just trying to kill this guy with uh, lances. I uh, flurry first because I want to throw lances into the flurry for the extra 20% damage because i this is like a, a moment where we need burst to kill him so fortunately man i'm getting like no shatter crits these games i have amplified tongues on me uh so i decurse that staying in earthen glacial spike warlock has an interrupt so i'm kind of trying to fake the cast i actually do do it look so again like i said guys you need to be looking at your omni bar at all times because look Warlock has an interrupt here. I'm not just going to sit here and cast this Glacial and get kicked on it. So I fake it kind of late. And then since I faked it late, um, what I do to kind of change up my pattern is this time I faked it very early. And I actually do fake him. That goes back to what we were talking about where you want to be switching up your patterns. So I go for the Frost Bomb with this uh, Precog. That I throw um, one Ice Lance because I know that Hold on, let me try to show you guys my vision here. So like I said, we get that precog. So the reason why I do frost bomb, the reason why I don't immediately start glacialing is because if I immediately started glacialing after my frost bomb, by the time I glacial ice nova, the frost bomb would not be close enough to expiring that it would get shattered by the ice nova as well. So I try to fit in an ice lance global to make it line up a little bit better. I block this shit because I'm like, nah, I, I want to kill this guy. So I do big damage here. I get a free sheep. At this point, I'm full health, so I didn't mind that offensive block. Since the Warlock, you, you'll notice something here, actually. The Warlock is low, but I'm not chasing him. I'm always sort of hitting the closest target towards me. Um, I feel like something a lot of lower rated players do is they'll try to they would push in like they would definitely push in here but like i said as mage hit far back hit closest target see this warrior is getting one shot we get cocoon on him now now we can start i use my essence proxy kill the observer real quick now i can start hitting the target who doesn't have cocoon he has an interrupt so i'm being a little bit careful with my casts here i have alter time up i time this glacial spike as the cocoon ends I do unfortunately get kicked, so I opt to shifting power. Warrior Stormbolt's at 0 0.1 seconds after. A little frustrating, so I trink it in order to just get uh, get my ramp up rolling. So start with the Frost Bomb. Orb. Blizzard. And we do die this round, unfortunately. I'm not sure how. I think at some point in the game, I, it doesn't appear that I use Counterspell very much this game. So I think the reason why we lose this game is because I didn't at all ever look for a blink counterspell on the healer. That's something that's going to be very important in the Mistweaver monks especially. Because they're really good at healing through PvE damage. Oh, what the hell? Yeah, it was this round. The Warlock Warrior. All right, so this will be another one here. So what's our opener into this? We start with Ring of Fire because we know that Shears are available. They let it go off. Again, also, like, you can see I'm trying to get these, I call these, like, pre-globals. Not, like, pre-globals, but, like, preemptive damage. Like, remember what we were talking about? If you can get these off first, it's huge because that's going to be, like, the difference between uh, a kill and not a kill sometimes. Frostbolt Flurry, Orb. Remember, we're doing these like in between globals on these frostbolt flurries because we want this winter's chill to last long enough to to shatter the the frost bomb. So then I veins and I ray of frost. Remember, you want to veins before you ray because when you veins, you're gonna get an instant ten stack cryopathy buff. Um, so then now I have a ring of fire on the target, which has already gotten him pretty low. 
the frost bomb is about to tick into the winter's chill and we have a ray taking on him which is also getting the glacial or which is also getting the uh, shatter bonus from winter's chill as well so this is a prime opener for us damage wise let's play it here i've already done a million damage 124k dps before anyone else has even done 100k damage so this is like i said really good opener here so far um we want to keep this momentum rolling here so lance lance uh, I try to dispel this guy's Amplify Curse so that he can crit, but I think I actually fat fingered this spell on someone else, so rip that. Throwing lances with the remaining orb I had. He has no interrupt here, so I'm just opting to try to get enough ice lances to build up a glacial spike so I can do my next one shot here. So Frost Bomb, uh, the lock ports it, so I immediately, instead of chasing the lock, I just hit the next closest target, which is the Shaman. Glacial Spike him. Try to make another power play and knocking him off the map. Not really doing it very well. I rebuff here. Stealing Earth Shield. Just trying to purge Bloodlust too. Got it. So now I have very fast haste. I get a shifting power off with it. Get a Blizzard down. That's going to help me get my orb back, which is almost off cooldown. Get a Frost Bomb rolling. Flurry. Ring of Fire. Lance. Lance. Ice Nova. Frost Bomb gets shattered and hits 173k into Ice Nova. Huge. Get another Blizzard down. Counterspell that lasso. You can see where I'm positioned to. I haven't really been talking too much about it, but you can see I'm always, I'm not playing on top of them. I'm not playing behind them. I'm just playing far back. Oops. I pop Alter Time here because uh, this is the Soul Rock go. Keep in mind. So this is basically whenever the this is going to be the only time the warlock really has pressure. So I just get a nice little high health altar here to help heal through all this dot damage that's about to hit us. But I don't think we're too worried about that. They're all very low. Throwing lances. Try to blink and knock them all out of link range, which actually works out very well because I knocked the spirit link there. Just doing crazy damage here we'll break that down a little bit because i didn't really break down my globals yes yeah, so we knock the link we kill it with fire blast we're just lancing into this guy because we have a bunch of procs you can see in this situation i'm not really using my um my blizzard because we're so close to a kill that i'm not really trying to like get my orb back or play for next orb i'm trying to like i actually think i have a real shot at killing this guy so you can see i have my big ray of frost here so i'm definitely going to be looking to flurry into ray this guy Blurry, Ray, kind of shimmer away from the Shaman that was coming up to shear me. And yeah, we take him out. Very quick, very clean damage game for me. Alright, let's look at this one here. Alright, back it up. Making a God is a lot of talking. <clears throat> Alright, so f uh, orb first global just to get a snare up on all of them in the middle of the bridge so they have a harder time to connect where obviously gets the charge on me. I commit my trinket early here. Uh, so you can see when whenever you trinket, you want to make it to where your healer doesn't have to use cooldowns on you so that later on in the game when you get stunned with no trinket, he still has those cooldowns. So since I trinket this early... The reason I trinket this early is because it's my orb. I want to start generating offensive pressure. It's kind of an offensive and defensive trinket because I trinket alter at 100%. I'm out of line of the purges. Um, if they are to connect to me, I'll just jump down and then try to get like ring of fires on the side and blizzards on the side. I get my ring of fire, still lining the purges. Once I realize they don't really care about me anymore, I start peeking out and I just start doing big uh, ice lances here to build up my glacial spike since I just used my orb. Again, I really want to make sure that the healer doesn't have to use anything on me. So I would have walled and hellstoned here had I taken more damage. I'm trying to get some far away positioning here from them because they are playing double melee. So even though I'm kind of far from my healer, I do potentially have a gateway back to him. Um, you can see I'm already kind of in like a more defensive mindset this game uh, because of the amount of pressure I'm under. 
I still have my Ray. I still have, I have so much damage for me. I'm just not really able to get it off into double Shaman with a warrior on me as well. So we're gonna have to see how we deal with that. We get a nice double sweep here. I should, yeah, I look to Ray that. And then I probably pair Shimmer with this as to not get kicked by the warrior here. Shimmer. Unfortunately, we're not getting like lucky crits here. Almost dies anyways. DB, blast wave them. Try to glacial the warrior, but he has reflex, so I'm being very careful. One thing you can do, guys, this is an insane tip, by the way. Kind of, I don't know, it's, it's kind of like, you guys can decide if it's worth it on your own, but glacial spike, if you know a warrior has reflect, and I know he does, what they'll try to do is they'll try to reflect it. You can actually spam glacial and then spam fire blast as it's casting, and that will eat the reflect. He doesn't do it here, though. But yeah, it gets a nice little root on him. That wasn't really like a glacial kill. That was more like just a glacial like CC. I'm about to drop my orb and I'm about to be spamming lances anyway. So I'm going to build up another glacial very, very quickly here. Frost bomb because I want to try to get some pressure here. I pet Nova the Shaman over there because I plan to kite more over here to the right. So I know it's going to be very awkward. If, like I'm going to go over here. So I pet Nova the Shaman here. The DPS are going to want to chase me. Uh, which is going to create a very awkward thing for the shaman here because he now has to go very very far fortunately i get stuck here just like triple dr stunned i wall out of this um because yeah maybe this is a bad wall actually no war no, like no cooldowns committed from them i get a nice precog here by faking blizzard I get a blizzard down so the reason why i prioritize this blizzard with my precog here is because this is a game i'm getting trained very brutally so i know that i'm gonna need orb to be able to do a lot of like meaningful damage because i'm gonna need those instant ice lances um so i opt to blizzard all these pets and whatnot to hopefully get my orb back pretty soon here so i start chucking my lances that i have we get feared so this is would not be a bad alter what i actually end uh end up doing here is going for a glacial spike i wouldn't be surprised if this doesn't get interrupted maybe blade storms it which cancels the ice nova <clears throat> which cancels the ice nova so it doesn't get the shatter effect Fuck. yeah i definitely should have altered here i do it a little bit late and then my healer cocoons me over top of it so kind of like a defensive error on my end but now that i'm cocooned i'm looking to do big damn because i'm immortal so i'm gonna you know, ring of fire, maybe look for a sheep. I counterspell that heal for once I use counterspell, thank god. Frost bomb, start trying to start my rotation. Uh orb, lance, lance. I try to ice nova this uh frost bomb that's about to tick. Or actually I tried to nova it. Uh because yeah, you can do that. You can nova it as well if you don't have uh ice nova. But unfortunately, I get Stormbolt at the same time, so it doesn't quite go off. It still hits really hard. Keep in mind, you don't do more damage into Shatter unless you're Ice Lancing or using Sub-Zero. Um, but Shatter is what's going to guarantee it crits. This one just crit on its own, so it still hit pretty hard. Um, so yeah, I have to block here. Let's see why I block here. Yeah, so I just blocked because I don't know I was kind of low and I didn't really want to sit that stun. We have good offensive pressure here, so it's kind of like a block as a trinket in a way as well. So we get a nice fear spamming lances with the orb down, and we take them out with the flurry into the lance. Big man. We have one more game here. Oh, looks like we might have killed someone instantly. Let's look at how this game went. <laughs> so let's see. The warrior is right in my face. So I'm going to obviously opt to hit him because the lock is positioning himself to where he can't counter spell me, which I love because that means I can get my full damage off. So I frost bomb, flurry, veins, lance one time, pet, or I orb them to keep them nice and slowed. And then I trinket and I ray of frost into my winter chill my frost bomb's about to tick boom big frost bomb ray ray all crits perfect perfect you can see this got us the i think this is like number two or number three right now on the solo shuffle ladder so it's pretty high rated game too 
Um, yeah, guys. Wow. If you've made it to this point in the guide, drop a comment. Drop fucking Agus hypes in the in the in the chat. You guys are dedicated to learning the mage class. We're a rare breed nowadays because of how unforgiving this class can be at times. Also, mage. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I want to say right now is kind of. I, I'm a mage diehard fan, and to me, it's been like a little bit difficult to play recently because the rework did not come out like as strong as other classes reworks have have them um being and also on top of that like mage is not really like a thing that you like build comps around kind of just like a every comp has a better addition but i won't ramble on too much about my my thoughts on that but anyways i hope you guys enjoyed the guide that's all i really have um as you can see with my ui and stuff if you guys want the UI, join the Discord channel. I have as much help as I could possibly give you guys in there. And if you do have individual questions, just ask them in the Discord. I have a bunch of people that will answer for you. If not me, you can DM me. I have all my exports, all my weak auras, all everything, blah, blah, blah. Tell me wins. Yeah. And then also, please drop by the Twitch stream. Drop a prime, drop a sub. It's going to support me. A lot and also i do plan on making guides like this for the other two specs as well um if we hit the sub goal so definitely come support me i stream and do youtube full time i definitely want to continue doing that as well so if you guys do want to support me and you want to keep getting content like this um for a mage maybe other classes in the future as well please show the support i would appreciate it very much anyways that's all i got that's a wrap that's ggs stay frosty cringe. All right, bye.